Okay. Sorry about that. Audio thing working out. I'm still sipping down the last of my hot chocolate, so I'm taking a couple extra minutes. Don't hate me for it. Oh, okay, but but actually now I'm here. Hey, <laughs> what's up everybody? How you doing? You like the little drip drops? Added that in myself. I absolutely did not. That's part of the song, but it's a fun song. Hi, welcome to Thursdays. Thursdays with tomato. We're, we're big, we're red, we're shiny, we're fun. How y'all doing? Good to see you, Plywood Box, Reese, Nahore, Jack, Deja. Deja and Tandu. I like that name. Polaris and thumbnail, of course, I'm going to show up. We're going to talk about the Polaris today. We're going to talk in depth about the Polaris because that's something that's probably maybe coming out next year. ISC? No ISC. Nah, we won't have ISC until probably... Ooh. January 25th is likely going to be... Mark it down in your calendar. Let's see. They usually don't come back before the 20th. Um, and they usually don't wait until February. So I'm assuming that their first ISC this year will be the 25th, but maybe if they're struggling, they might wait until the 1st of February. That would suck, but they might. See McD, Jack and Shaka, Jay Bird and Leon, Timble, how you doing? Turtle Tommy too. Glad to see the, to the Turtle Tommy back, the OG. What's up, man? Zero, Jason. A zero. We got zero and A zero. <laughs> and they're both spelled with threes. It's like the Spider Man meme. That's crazy. Look at you two. Did you plan that? Is this the Truman thing? Whatever that's called. Bring it to your bow. What's up, dude? Oh sevens. Eisenhorn, the E1 spirit. We don't know about that. We're 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 not gonna hear anything specific, so I don't know if we'll see it, but uh, we can touch on it. Game crouton. <laughs> Yummy. How you doing? Leon, welcome. Howdy. Vertigree. Good to see you. I got hot chocolate today, guys. This is my warm drink of the day. Mrs. Tomato was very kind and... Oh! Also bringing out the hazelnut... Or the uh, chestnuts. <laughs> hazelnuts. They're they're both... They're Turkish nuts, okay? Or at least they're the nuts I associate with turkey. Besides my own. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> uh question are you still in the bay area or did you return to turkey no still in the bay area we can't can't quite return to turkey yet we really would like to returning to turkey is expensive so we kind of have to choose when we're going to go and uh and and why and that actually brings me to a good topic that i'll i'll get out of the way now so we can get to the ships and stuff oh sevens everybody welcome in how you doing how you doing how you doing so we are we're still here um and we were actually going to head back early this time because of the problems that we had in, um, uh, we got damage to our house back in Turkey. And so we need to head back there to take care of that. But we are actually deciding to stay. And um, that's because we have a medical, a, a bit of a medical emergency in the family that we are gonna stay here probably over the next couple of months for. So, you know, it, all, it, it helps us with, being able to consistently stay here and work and not break it up with like an expensive flight back and getting recalibrated and everything. Um, but it also, you know, obviously we want to be here for family. So earlier this month, um, my mom was diagnosed with cancer, uh, breast cancer. And so we've been, you know, getting ready for that. And, um, Tomorrow, actually, we won't be streaming. There won't be any stream tomorrow uh, because she will be having surgery and we will be there. So that's going to be something that's going on over the next couple of months and it's something that we've been preparing for. But it's also a reason why we will be staying in the States for a while longer. Um, and it's part of, you know, December has been a <laughs> quite a month. So that's been part of why you might have noticed a bit of a slowdown in videos or um, maybe a little bit less stuff coming out on that end. So, yeah, we'll be in the U.S. for a little while longer. Appreciate it, Jaybird. Um, but yeah, 
that's that's kind of a little bit of our outlook over the next couple of months. We're going to be talking a lot more about that at our new New Year's stream. Hope you guys will be there. Well, as we do every year, because, you know, annual, every year does have an, an end and a new. And uh, me and Mrs. T like to get on the camera and do a little celebration with you all in the game. So we'll still be doing our normal New Year's stream on the 31st. Please join us, if you will. We'll be starting around 9.30 EST on the stream, and the event will be starting about an hour later. And it'll be a lot of fun. That's where we'll really talk about a lot of the stuff that we have planned for the upcoming year, because we do have a lot of small little changes to how our content's going to work, how our org's going to work, maybe a couple plans for, for YouTube, um, new plans for things like the streams that we're doing, and our schedules. So more of that coming soon. But all that is, you know obviously part of our schedule thank you for the uh for the good wishes folks i appreciate it it's it's something a lot of people go through i'm not the first i'm not the last it, our family won't be the first or last and uh you know that part of being part of a community is great because we can help each other in situations where a lot of us have experienced the same kind of thing and uh i am i'm glad that i've been able to help other people through times like these and i know people will be there for us so uh, appreciate it guys thank you we already know that it's not a super serious case so things are looking up and and good and um we're going into it positively but that's that's enough about that yeah you guys came for ships right i put i put a polaris on the thumbnail yeah i didn't put a hospital on the thumbnail we're not we're not trying to sit here and talk about sickness the whole time is there a discord Yes, if you type an exclamation point Discord, that will show you the way. Apollo Triage, where is it? We're good. That one's coming up this year. This year, today, <laughs> right now. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, let this play me out real quick. Okay, now play me in. Thanks. It's kind of dramatic. It works. Okay, so, welcome. We're going to talk about ships today. Specifically, um, all the ships that are coming up in this new year. Because there are a lot. There are quite a few ships we know about. So, that's that's what we're talking about today, the ships we know about. Because honestly, the monthly reports haven't given us much to go on this far in the future. Um... But like the stuff that the company has already told us is coming in the next 12 months is pretty wild. So we're really going to just review that today and look at the stuff they've said over the last six months or so about those ships and what we know about them. If there are any guesses, maybe in chat, if you want to throw some out there or if any come to my mind while we're watching this, maybe we'll go on, a, on some deep dives. I think they're more aptly called tangents where <laughs> we'll go into some of the past Star Citizen videos and see if we could find some more proof and evidence. But we're really touching on the known ships and vehicles coming to Star Citizen in 2024. See, now that's good timing. <laughs> um, yeah, let's dive in. We're going to start here with an Invictus chat from last year. This is the roundtable talk they do every Invictus, which is like a big military ship event. So you generally they're talking about military ships, but they also spend some time talking about the ships that are coming up. And we're going to jump around this conversation a little bit because there is, there are a couple of mentions of different things that we're going to be interested in. But let's start with them, just what they have to say about the actual ships they know are coming out. And again, remember, this is from June of last year. So this isn't necessarily speaking from the context of when I'm publishing this. Don't get that. Don't get that mixed up. Yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. technically stopping us. Yeah. yeah. So what, I, so what I heard was that whole CMX uh, at Citizen Gun. Oh, yeah. just full of size nine torpedoes. <laughs> All of the uh, cargo arms are just full of. You make sure we're at the right point. Also, shout out to these people who right. do these. Thank you so much. This helps a ton. Um, where were we? Here we are. I've seen cases like this. Um, can you just can you just give us an update on ships that are? What you would consider an active production as opposed to like pre-production. We know the Polaris is it, what we consider pre-production. Yeah. Somebody is on there scoping out the work necessary before it moves into production. But what's an active production right now? We're in the danger zone here now. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to slowly do it and look at John as I okay, see. So there's, there's, there's Redacted that's on Josh. Yeah. There's Adam. Will I talk about that one? 
Uh, I'm trying to think what Adam's doing. Uh, <laughs> Who knows? Spirit. Yeah. Yep. We've got <laughs> too late. Too late, too late now. Yeah, yes. I, I, I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure that one was safe. Um, so we've got the spirit in. What else do we have? In? SLV just finished art and design. So these are yep, ships yep. we've already gotten. Hull C. Yep. Hull C. Gotten that one. Uh, in its final teething. We've got some stages. more more redacted that were on Chris. We got that. Got <laughs> what, what else is it? What are the US work? X X one. Uh, What's the US X1, X1 we got. About to start. The See, they, they, they kind of try to stick to like a six month outlook, yeah, I the think. Storm is. Storm's, storm's done. Through production. Oh, he did it. He did it. Oh. No, it was in the segment. It was in the episode yesterday. Oh, oh you said oh. the storm is coming through. Yeah. No, uh, we actually. Uh, we, mi we missed a narrative bit. It's, again, some of those things that missed through. It's like, in case you guys didn't catch it from the, from the episode, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the Tumble Storm is in a concept promotion right now as part of Evictus, but it is already in production yep. with the uh, LA weather. Yeah, weather. Anybody use the Tumble Storm? Or like the anti air one? Yeah, that was not concept art. That was the actual white box and well into gray box uh, stuff. It's looking great so far. They're doing the Sun Talk. Santok well. Yai, uh, that one's into. We'll be updating for the Santok. We got all these we'll ships already. We're showing you an update on the Santok Yai for Alien Week in just a few weeks. Uh, Y'all remember that video? <laughs> Honestly, it's 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 one of my it's one of my favorites. It was <laughs> one of my more salty videos. Remember the one though? I think it was two years ago now. Um, Gamer Ranks, who is a YouTube channel that I actually really like to watch. It's like it's like gaming popcorn YouTube. It's really easy to go in there and just find new games and like see general commentary about video games i like the channel but they went and did a video about star citizen or they did a video about like things in gaming they didn't like and one of them was star citizen and he was just like scrolling through the sales page and he's like all of these ships you can't get in game and it's like all of them are ships you can get in game so i went and got all of them and matched them to the points in the video it's a lot of fun but it just reminds me of th this kind of stuff reminds me of it because these people are talking about ships that were all unreleased at the time of this video in may and we have them all now, and they're they're working. And it's annoying that people still think that we're just <laughs> looking at a bunch of pictures. Like some of the some of the ships should be in the game, and they're not yet. And they really should be. Banu Merchantman. We'll, we'll be touching on that today. Honestly, there are like a few of the really bad cases. I think the X one was one of the the biggest oofs. But it's just so weird that people still think we're all looking at pictures. Somebody commented on one of my videos that we're playing with NFTs. Like, dude, there's a little more to it. Just a little bit, though. They're JPEGs, not NFTs. Uh, Who cares about the file? Mentally go around the floor. <laughs> Pretty sure that's all of them. Because uh, retaliator well. stuff we're doing, we talked about before. G12. Uh, G12 will be going. So in in the next year, backlog ships that will be going into production. Caveat: things okay. can always yeah. change. Yeah. Uh, Polaris, uh, Apollo. G12, Raylan, X1s. I, I'm noticing something conspicuously absent. The, um, the, the I don't know what you're talking about. Ban, 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 ban new. So we'll talk about the merchantman briefly, because uh, we, we discussed like how, how we want to do the backlog of capital ships. Uh, so we want to want to start with RSI, uh, because doing the Polaris first helps reduce the amount of work needed for the Perseus. He said the P the word. Mm -hmm. So uh, those three will likely be like a, a chain of dependencies from each other. Kind of shared assets. Yeah, between. there's a lot of shared assets right. between them. Obviously the exteriors are like, quite different, but you do an RSI hall kit or corridor kit, floor kit. Doors. Doors. Beds. Beds. Chairs. Yeah, it all gets reused across them, maybe with some slight material differences. Uh, so there are a few things that were problematic with the BMM. Uh, Firstly, everything is unique. Everything. So it's not like we do one corridor kit. It can't be modular. Yeah, it's it can't so be modular. It has to be shapes. unique. Yeah. Nothing on the ship can be modular. Every yeah. corridor, every room. Everything's unique. Oh, so nice the amount of time investment. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some chairs, but even then yeah. some of the chairs we couldn't reuse because of the shaping of the rooms. So like molded something. Yeah. Right? There's, there's so like it, lots of everything. It was so it, yeah, there, we had a lot of people on there. Uh, we had some unfortunate people leaving, uh, which they've been here quite a while. So we he literally, I'm just going to get a little bit ahead of myself here. Um, that that's what he just said right there is they talk about it at CitizenCon like four months later. 
this is a <laughs> I think this is a big statement they really wanted to get out this this past year that like hey guys this stuff the the ship stuff we're working on it but like they, they're clearly working on it but they hit a snag here actually going up um, see if I can find and, the part where know, he's talking about that more team members that also means we get kind of like not just more people to throw at stuff allows us to kind of tackle up there is a a little dip you will notice there in 2022 there is a a little dip um and you know unfortunately when when that happens that has kind of real consequences on what we are able to do as a team i think you know less people so less power to put on stuff but also some of that knowledge leaves us with that that leads us to have to make some so that's something that he then like that's what they're referencing here in Invictus week last year we'd lost a lot of sort of that team knowledge and part of rebuilding the team uh obviously effectively again like we said you don't get new staff members go hey welcome to the Banu merchantman here's a completely <laughs> yeah. thing that does not follow any of our existing art guidelines yeah and all the time we would have put into that was would be just for that ship mm -hmm. we get no reuse from it so yes we will we will do it again, but personally, I think the time is better spent on other capital ships to get people up to speed, and then we can start putting people back on it. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of love within the team for the merchantman. Yeah. I think it's except yeah. for the picture Mark took a bit. Yeah, apart from Mark's the FOV. The FOV on that. Regard. I'm never going to hear the end of that, am I? No, no. Yeah. no. no. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think yeah, there's a lot of excitement there for it. It's just making sure that, again, like we said, that the team's set up to succeed with it, and we can actually deliver it. To yeah. the standards. Why don't we check in on where they are with the merchantmen since they're talking about it so much? For those don't who don't know, this is one of those ships that when I'm like, oh yeah, they um they really need to like there are some ships that they should have delivered by now. This is one of them. Let's go back real quick through history. And um see if we can find the page where they announced this thing. Oh man, I don't even know. Might be able to find it on the wiki. Let's see. References, references, references. We've got the Clipper Ship Banner Merchantman. Looks like that's the first one. Anniversary live sale and stream. All right, so this ship was announced in 2013, it looks like. Looks like the earliest post is November 2013. Can't even display it because <laughs> because they gotta use Flash and it's no longer supported, just to give you an idea of how old it is. Um, and obviously it looked a lot different, like just to give you an idea, this is the first concept we ever saw of it and this is what it looks like now. So like a lot of people are rather perturbed by the way that it's changed in style. Come on, give me a... Obviously everything changes from in-game to concept, but you can see that it's much more rounded out. It's much more civilian and less aggressive than what they were showing us back then. And a big part of this is like, it was 2013, they were making things to look cool. That's, they did that a lot. That's a lot of the stuff has changed since then in terms of art styles and in terms of lore. And like the people who own this ship, who make this ship are like the most peaceful people there are. So it, this looking, kind of Van esque a little bit, a little more aggressive, doesn't fit as, as much with them. Um, I'm guessing it also was more difficult to make this in-game than, than what they've made. Like, they've made some art concessions based on probably how easy it is to do, and also just changing art styles, and that's, that's, that's rubbed people. But as you can see, this was announced and put on sale more than 10 years ago now. It's over a decade. Um... The promised Banu Merchantman was released for a sale. Banu traders are renowned for their merchant prowess, traveling the space lanes and trading with everyone from humans to the Van Duel. Their sturdy, dedicated trading ships are prized beyond all transports, sometimes passing from generation to generation of Banu. Pick up a Banu Merchantman for a whole new Star Citizen experience. Yay! Cue the grunt birthday party yays. Drazen, thank you for the sub, dude. That deserves another grunt birthday party yay. Appreciate you, man. 38 freaking months. <laughs> oh my god. That's like almost as old as my niece. Not quite, but almost. That's that's a long freaking time, dude. Cheers. Okay, 2013. What is this page? Does this even still exist? Nah, it's a 404. I wanted to see if there was anything earlier than that. But it doesn't look like it. 
at least not on here but yeah this is an early early ship and it's 650 freaking dollars <laughs> people paid, people paid a lot for this thing um so quite rightly so people really want to know more about it and it was worked on and hyped up for like a ton of 2022 and then the person working on it left and they were like okay you're not gonna get it so it's now on the back burner and here is really what they had to explain that this citizen con but this is the latest we know about the merchantman and we'll see where it goes from there with the merchantman just to show where we were up to before that happened in 2022. <laughs> So you can see like they have a lot of organic sort of shape and architecture and the style is completely different from anything else in the game so that's what they're talking about when they say we can't just throw new people onto the ship if somebody else leaves we have to make sure to get other people it's like it's like asking a newcomer to come into your game and or come into your company and build a new piece of construction material that your company hasn't made yet like, they don't even know how your company works enough to do that. So they have to build the people up to do it, and I guess that takes a while. But there's also, as a point was made in, in the comments here in the live stream, there's still a lot that's going to need to be done for this. I mean, you're going to have to be able to run a shop on your ship. That single seat there was a turret. So this, uh, this seat here is yeah this is the the turret there's actually a nice shot of this in another let me see if i can look this up real quick there's a nice shot and explanation of how that sort of looks the way it does i think in this video change to the animations yep i'll have to <laughs> this ship is huge see they did a lot of coverage of this thing this is 22 yeah um, because they were expecting the launches at the end of the year, this year, and this would have made them so much money at IAE that year if they had gotten a launch. Here it is. Check this out. Entryway to get inside the main man turret. This is kind of one of the rooms that we spent a bit of time kind of playing with in white box and making sure we got it right. Uh, we really wanted this to kind of feel, um, yeah, you know, like quite a moment walking into it. Yeah. Uh, go on, Jarrett. No, no. It, it, <laughs> okay. Even even in gray box, this is quite a moment here. Yeah, there, there was some really nice bits in the kind of concept where you had these kind of like um, these these like lit walls, and we tried to kind of pull some of that into. And I think it's almost having that kind of moment of um, uh, like solitude before you kind of get yoinked up into to battle. Um, so it's you know quite a lonely area of the ship everywhere else on the ship kind of feels like it's it's built for like like mark was saying like the family whereas this is kind of very purposeful you, you know what you're getting into as soon as you walk in that room and obviously the exterior shell there when all said would, done would open up and reveal yeah. you to the outside yeah absolutely space. yeah so these an, animations an about they're not showing us these animations from the top are pretty cool i don't know if they show it in this video 
It's Man, we've the... really seen a lot of coverage of the Merchantman because I'm just trying to think of the different videos where I've seen what I'm thinking of. They showed um, they showed some shots of the the out the exterior opening and closing. I don't remember where that was. Is that not here? Hmm. Yeah, it might be. Look at how big this cargo freaking area is. Stalled. Look at this. As you can see, the amount of cargo that the what ship the? holds is colossal. And These are one SCU boxes. So like this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't know. How, how tall is a 32 SCU box? Four tall? So this would be like the t the height of a 32 SU box, I think. So what is it? God, I don't even know the dimension of that. But like, this is a ton of cargo. Oh, holy crap. <laughs> Amount of cargo that the ship holds is colossal. And just the Although sheer I don't volume think it's more than it the whole city. this cavernous, cathedral-like view of being stuck in the rafters of a, a warehouse worth of stock. Yeah, it gives you a real sense times, of how tall two. the ship actually is. Uh, when we get to the, the, the market... So it's um, too tall, okay. You kind of get a glimpse at that. Wow. It's not until you get... Oh, so these might not be... No, these are 1 SU. I'm sorry. Yeah, you can see the, the distinction here. I thought these were 1 SU. I thought they were, the top was right here, but I think the top is right here. I think. Now I'm confused. I th I'm pretty sure these are 1 8th. And someone like this that spans... The they didn't even have 1 SU the back then. Got a hanger above the, <laughs> back the in the day. Um, about how, how big the ship actually is. Well, we're not going to be able to go through every single room and nook and cranny today. This is too big a ship. So let's go to the market now and take a look at that. So right. Think, so um, yeah, this is I'll let them explain what a lot of the kind of customers are going to see when they first walk into the ship. Is this sort of like reveal um, of the market area? And what we tried to do in, in, in this area is um, kind of everywhere you walk into it, you're kind of um, walking through a, a small tunnel or you know, quite a tight space so that when you kind of do walk into it, it does then open up and you can see that sort of like that that grandeur and that height of the ship and you know this is only two out of i think it's five or six floors at this point of, of you know the, the part of the ship you're in um but i think it's just a nice kind of like reveal of the the, the overall kind of uh again just repeating that that size and that verticality that, that we see in the other areas of the ship um i think we've already shown a lot of the concept art of this area already um, but the idea here is that you've got this, you know, hollow in the middle that will kind of, you know, will allow um, the the uh, the traders to kind of show off some of their um, items. So we're going to go back to the other video I was showing you from CitizenCon, and you'll see this area updated. So yeah, it's, it's a very exciting area of the ship, this part. Okay, and the last area we want to show you today is, is kind of the area that we spent a little bit more time on. It's a little bit further along. We tried to take some areas... Yeah, Actually, you know what? No, it's not updated. They basically just re-show you all this stuff in a more cinematic look. I'm pretty sure it's all at the same stage. Because he said they were showing us the work that was done when their artist left. So I'll just show you this again, I guess. Key area that you can kind of refer to as, as you know, yeah, this, this is what the Merchantman's all about. And whilst each area of the ship will have its own feel, will have its own kind of uh, style and in its own forms, um, I think this is a good indication of um, the kind of elegance. And you know, if you imagine this is the crew area and the uh, guest area is going to be a level above this, um, I think it gives you a good idea of, of what we're aiming for. The other thing is with the Banu, they're, they're very communal in how they actually... Right. Let's go back to the other video. Because like the, the Merger Man is not the only thing that might come in next year. I think it's actually one of the less likely things to come next year, but I just wanted to cover it because it's here and... It will come up.
Yeah, see, this stuff all looks pretty much the same as it did. I don't know. Yeah, but when though? I think he's going to talk about that now. <laughs> so that video shows you know, where we got up to with the merchantman. You can see we finished white box. We were kind of into gray box. Some areas were further than others. And I think one of the best things about working at a company like Cloud Imperium Games is that we're able to be pretty honest and pretty open with our development. One of the biggest questions we get is, what's up with the merchantman? Where is it? Why did it stop? Um, and you know, the merchantman brought a lot of unique challenges to us. It was a completely new art style, something that's very, very different from what we normally do with our human manufacturers. I think you know, we could have paused other ships. We could have moved some of our other artists onto the merchantman. But with the kind of exodus of our kind of senior team in 2022, um, we didn't just lose people, we lost a lot of the knowledge that went into building out that white box and really kind of delivering that art style. What we decided to do at the time is rather than try and rush something out and just get something out to, to get it done, we looked at where we were and for us, the most important thing was growing our team back up. We wanted to invest in our team and use our seniors and our kind of managers to help get us up to the point where you know, we can tackle multiple large and capital ships at one time. I think the graph previously kind of showed that you know, we've got the head numbers now, and now it's about onboarding our new staff members. It's about skilling them up and getting them to the point. And I would absolutely love to be stood here on stage going, yeah, look at the merchant, it's amazing. Like, it's, you know, it's done. Um, but we're not at that point just yet. We do see all the comments. I do see all the, the notes about it. And you know, I absolutely want to get this ship out and done. Um, and, you know, we'll, yeah, I just wanted to be open and honest as to where we are up to with the development. Yeah. Uh, to, to add to that, it is probably the most question I get asked at any event, and I really want to get done and get it out for you guys, but we don't want to give you a half-baked thing. We want to give you a really great product. So this isn't coming next year. Of, and it's delivered alongside gameplay. So let's talk about something else quickly. <laughs> let's talk about something we can say is coming next year all right so this <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's such a funny transition i missed that when i was there um so now we're going to get into the idris and the javelin but before we do that let's just finish up this invictus talk real quick and see if they mention any other ships can we expect can you imagine training new people on developing a brand new art style for yeah. a ship. Because like, it, I, I generally think Merchantman's gonna be one of the hardest ships we ever do, just because of all the additional factors that involve with it, the, the scale of it, the, the fact that nothing is really reused, it's all unique molded. All the for the record, all... I think they are totally taking the ad advantage of the fact that they lost the people who could finish this ship. Yeah, they're going to make a new, they have to train people and get people up to the standard and make sure they figure out how to build this ship. But the the unword word, the unsaid words here are that they also need to do that for the gameplay, right? We all know that this is there's no way this could launch in the next year and have the gameplay they want planned for it. No, not a single person following Star Citizen thinks that we'll have enough NPC crew capability by the end of 2024 for a brand new merchantman to run correctly right or is that a thing do people is there is there a conspiracy i don't know about you'd have to have the ability for these npcs to dock with your ship come aboard talk to you buy stuff and then leave i just don't see it so i think they're also taking the opportunity here to like work on this ship on the gameplay side as well and i agree with you guys in chat it's gonna be a little while rowan thank you for the um thanks for becoming a supporter on youtube i appreciate it 
I've got a new video coming out soon. It's actually a two-parter. It's an exclusive. The first part's exclusive. The second part's coming out publicly. But it's describing basically who Star Citizen is made for by going through all of the different types of gameplay that we can currently do for a living. So, you know, piloting, FPS gameplay, bounty hunting, mining, salvaging, all those things wrapped up into a single presentation. And it's going to be half and half. So just becoming a supporter, you get access to that when it comes out. So keep an eye out on the uh, main YouTube channel. You just want a middle-sized ship uh, for two to three players. You know, that's their sweet spot. I think it was like the Mercury Star Runner was the first ship that I really felt like that was the best way for them to go about making ships. And I'm kind of disappointed that I didn't make a video about that before, but I think I will sometime early next year. They're, they're clearly, they've started to target that as their sweet spot as well. Two to three person ships in this game are going to be everywhere. Because you can fly a two to three person ship by yourself and be pretty efficient. But you can also bring your friends along whenever you want. And if it's got a bed, oh boy, if it's got two beds, whoa, whoa. You hope that server meshing will really help? Yeah, so do I. Surprised they bought up the Banu Merchant Man at CitizenCon. Seems like a topic they would want to avoid. Anytime you can get to mention it, man. It It's a very, very, very hyped ship. Um, I would say... What was another ship that was like this? Mercury Star Runner was kind of like that. They made a whole freaking cinematic video for the Mercury Star Runner. I think the Zeus might be one... We'll see. We'll see how they, they latch onto the Zeus, but the Spirit was a good little testing ground for the Zeus. Look forward to seeing how they handle that over this next year. Fours, it's, it's that It's a different cool like, art style. style of modeling as yeah, well, right? Yeah. In terms of our like actual discipline of like how we make ships. More organics. Yeah, it's like more like traditional vehicle modeling like than it would be like um, a hard surface weapon. Yeah, it's hard surface meets organic and yeah. this yeah, weird... Yeah. It's and automotive. Strange, yeah, yeah style. So we we we'd, We'd worked on that process and we had a good process in place and it was just unfortunate that someone chose to, they chose to go off and chase new adventures and, you know, wish them the best of luck and, you know, a big loss to the team. But, um, you know, that, that initial kind of pre-production was done and it's, and it's there. It's just, we just need to get to the point where we can still deliver our current, like, line of ships we want to deliver and we want to be able to do it justice and it just takes a bit of time. And keep on top of bug backlog. Keep on top of bug backlog. Uh, feature features. support, because we're, we're constantly yeah. supporting other feature teams. Like you've got the track, there's a lot of work with the tractor beam, there's a lot of work with the salvage, and there's other features coming online that we have to support, and all of them are time. Lot, lots of time investment from our side to actually implement them in the ships and stuff like the, the resources. Yeah. We, 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 didn't, we didn't get to it. One of the things we discussed uh, well, that I want to talk is when I talked about how we balance those things. It's like this. We'll we'll we'll, we'll do another one of these when it comes time for uh, IE probably in uh, November. But we I definitely there's definitely a place for a in depth discussion of how we balance that workload. The balance between new ships and ships that are already on backlog. Balance between giant capital ships or ships that are an entirely unique uh, art style versus that s the same people at the same time could crank out four other ships in the same period of time. How do you balance that? And then of course, you know, all the gameplay balance implications at 197 yeah. different vehicles now and, every, and uh, yeah. you know, and adding more and more, you know, balancing, you know, their capabilities and stuff. So there's, there, there's a, there's a video like this that can just be all about balance. And I think we'll, we'll probably pursue that uh, down the line because it's a conversation. Uh, yeah, yeah, we, we got some of that uh, right here. Um, so that's, I think that's mostly what they talked about when it came to the Baron Merchant. And I want to move on from that ship because like I said, this isn't coming next year. Let's talk about, let's see, there's a couple other places I'm going to drop in here. We're going to talk about the Polaris later. But let's look at the Idris and the Javelin. This was a small segment during CitizenCon that is actually a pretty big deal to some people because the <laughs> Idris and Javelin are the biggest ships we can own, at least that we know of right now. These ships are huge. The Javelin is, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> oh, man, anybody who's, like, not not been introduced to this ship this is like the definition of of insaneness for star citizen 
Like from the beginning, the idea for me that made Star Citizen so crazy was actually the same idea that made Star Wars Galaxy cool, I guess, is that you could have a spaceship that other people existed inside of. And this thing is so big. <laughs> what she said it's so freaking big it is 480 meters long and it takes a crew of 12 to 80 people so you could just get like 30 of your friends and go off in space and wreak havoc now i don't know what the heck you're going to be doing to be able to pay to run something like this because the upkeep the weaponry the fuel the engineering costs everything that you're going to have to do to pay in order to keep this functional is going to be nuts but it is a ship that we can buy, and it is a ship that we will be able to control and fly in the game. Unbelievably, it is a $3,000. So, don't don't buy it. <laughs> Unless you want to support the game. Like, it's just, there's no way that's going to be worth it. Um, unless you are coming from a big group, and you guys are, like, pool, pooling your resources together. But, here they have a little bit of a presentation about these ships, because they've existed as well for, like, 10 years now. They're part of the original pitch of this game, at least those first couple of years. They're a big part of Squadron 42, and that's part of why they've held them back. So here's their sort of explanation as to what's happening with these ships over the next year. How many of you have an address of some kind? <laughs> uh, right. So we plan to deliver the address alongside the squadron, alongside squadron. And that doesn't mean just the M. We're going to deliver the M, the P, and the K kit all together in one delivery. <laughs> Javelin owners, I'm afraid, you're going to have to wait a bit longer after that, is obviously the bigger ship players can own. Uh, and we have recently looked at what is left to deliver on it. We've got plans. There will be modularity with it. Um, and yeah, that will come after squadron releases. And those of you who also have uh, the Vandal Scythe, Glaive, Blade, after Squadron releases, you will also get the updated uh, models as well for that. Yeah, so the, the actually, these are pretty cool. Let's take a look at the, oops. <laughs> Just completely moved where the video was. Let's take a look at that real quick because visual teaser. Because they look, the, the updated models look pretty nice. Check this out, check this out. Come here, come here, check this out. Come here, come here. Get closer. Here we go. Oh God, I'm so sorry, your, your poor ears. I'm sorry. Told y'all to get closer and then I messed them up. So these are the new Vandal ships and like they look... Man, I don't know. If I can find you guys a picture of what these used to look like. There we go. Vandal. Vandal Blade. So yeah. You can kind of see. This is what these, these ships used to. Supposed to look like. And now they look like this. So they've changed the style up a lot. And we haven't seen. Like this is. Sorry. Tabs. 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 This is from 2019. Like, we still don't know really what's going on with them, but clearly they're done with them and they're going to update them whenever they get into the game. So a lot of updates are going to come to ships when Squadron 42 goes through, and I'm guessing it'll also lead to a lot of the gold standard reworks for things like Retaliator and Saber and Gladius. Next. Okay. No kind of ship panel at CitizenCon event. All it's right. Kind of done. So that's about that segment. That was real quick Squadron 42 video segment, I guess. I want to make sure I'm going in order here. Can't get too confused. Okay, we're going to jump back into October. We had a couple of small updates on vehicles here that I'm sure people are excited for. The first is actually our bounty hunting ship. So let's all remember fondly, might I add the very small hints that they've been dropping about new um, bounty hunting functionality coming to the game. We have this restraints. here. So with the restraints, Some restraints. Okay, let's take them down for it. One more. Oh, 
Okay, so with the restraints, we're going to turn him over. We're going to cuff his hands. We're going to cuff his legs. Now, if he wakes up, he can't chase us down, right? But he could call out for help. So what we're going to do as well is we're going to add places in the environment where you can stash a body. You can hide them, either unconscious or dead. And there were, that way, it should be easier to remain undetected and keep you in that stealth bubble. Um, now, this is another thing we talked about in the UI demo, uh, which is the ping. Okay. And so we in that's part of the um, bounty hunting stuff we've been starting to see. And I believe I've got something else. You know what? It's going to be easier for me to just look this up in my own files. Because I don't actually know. I don't know what month this was. So I won't be able to find the actual episode. So these. Let me see. I actually might be able to look up the time. Uh, this was in April of 2023. Let's see if we can. Because I do want to see what they were saying about this. This is also some some of the hints that they're dropping about bounty hunting. Don't worry, this will all make sense very soon. April, 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 April. Sorry, some background music, some elevator music. Um, All vehicles, storm, get furious, call it a new player experience, salvage, blah, blah, blah. Trackstar? No. More of a Lorville? Maybe. Nope. Too new. Mission to module, tractor factor. I like tractor factor. Oh, you know where it would be? No, 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 no. This would be in our... Uh, one sprint report that we got. <laughs> I think it's this one. Yeah, here it is. The one sprint report we got in the beginning of the year. We only got two throughout the whole year. And during this one, that's how I should have remembered it. They showed us some bounty hunting updates, I swear. Did they not? Yeah, it was. Here we go. And down on the surface of Hurston, work is underway on early white box phase of local law enforcement offices. A place for players to utilize the next evolution of bounty hunting gameplay we'll discuss more about later this year. To collect, or in this case, drop off the captured bodies of criminal outlaws collected by players. Now the drop off here is right up front, cause in early tests, it was getting kind of weird just walking through the hallways, pushing bodies deeper and deeper into the facility. So these pods you're are key. Sort of thing. You're going to notice them a lot more as we realize, or as CIG, I guess, realized throughout their the design and development of bounty hunting that um, it's going to be, there needs to be a, a universal area they can put bodies instead of you just dragging bodies around and throwing them in your ship. And they came up with these body pods. So we'll see in a second here how they've changed one of the most iconic bounty hunting ships to accommodate for that or go forward into the shop and resupply as needed. And there's an office for meetings, but who needs more of those in life? And then we bring ourselves to the detention area, where a number of cells can vary from location to location. I suspect that many of you will be looking forward to spending your time anywhere else besides Kleischer, even if it's just a jail and not a prison. Also in white boxes, okay, the pre-production. So there's a lot that goes on with, with bounty hunting, and they still haven't really... I don't think there's a design document for this one. Um, they've been a little bit mum about how it's supposed to work. But it's probably about time for us to put a video together, because they've, they've like slowly let things out. Basically, we know that we're going to be tracking people down via uh, services like... Um, Air traffic control, or I guess space traffic control, I don't know. Um, security systems and pings, comms, comms arrays and stuff like that. We will have to go and specifically locate our targets, restrain them, and take them back to an area. So the game loop itself is going to go a lot longer than what it is right now, which is basically just legal murder. And we can see that here with one of these 
older ships. There's the Hawk, which released in like 2017 or 2018. They didn't know what bounty hunting was going to look like fully, but they had an idea and here's how they're changing it. Let's keep our tour of potential gameplay changes to ships going with the Anvil Hawk. Now, one of our team members on the EU vehicle content team recently completed a first pass sprint revisiting the Hawk to explore a potential new methodology for loading and unloading what I'm just going to affectionately call the Wanted Fugitive and Stasis Cargo Containers, or WIFT for short. <clears throat> the idea being that once you've captured and contained your prey in the with <laughs> and set it down behind the ship, this articulating arm would then come out and using the power of electromagnetism, suck the <laughs> into its grasp God. and pull it up inside the vehicle. Yeah, all this for the for the with uh. looks pretty good. All right, so it should be noted. So yeah, that's mostly what we have on bounty hunting. The other side of the information we have on this game uh, mechanic is actually the virtual AI side, if you don't know that. It's basically just, it's like, um, remember Shadow of Mordor, where they had like the, the nemesis system. If you killed someone or interacted with somebody, they'd remember you. There are supposed to be virtual AI going about the game that have like a memory that sticks with them. They commit crimes, those crimes stick with them. They have a reputation, it sticks with them. They buy things, they sell things, they encounter things, it sticks with them. And those people are supposed to be able to rack up bounties. And those will be some of our targets as well as players. But they're probably going to have to go a lot more into detail on that because that was the information on that is two years old and it's from Tony Z. And it's probably changed throughout the design process. But yeah, that was that was a little update on the Hawk. There's another pretty key update here. <sighs> another big crowd favorite, the RSI Apollo. Look inside the white box progress of the RSI Apollo Medevac, which is currently in production. And I still think the Apollo exterior looks too damn cool to be a space ambulance. John, Ben, I'm gonna need a, 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 a fighter or, 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 or a smuggler variant. I would really, Apollo. really love no, a general purpose ship that looks like the Apollo. But I feel like the way a lot about a lot of ships, I think it's, it's nice that the ships don't do everything for everyone. Um, man, yeah, an exploration ship though, that looked like this would be awesome. Here is kind of a better, look into this ship now as mentioned um this was in production but may have been paused as of right now so it might not come next year but i do think there's still a possibility that we could see it this is again one of the less likely ships i think that we'll see this and the merchantmen specifically i think are further back as well as another one we'll talk about here soon the the gatak raylan but um i still think there is a possibility with this one so let's take a look kind of at what the point of this ship is and what the devs were saying about it back when they introduced it five years ago in 2018. Concept ship to Star Citizen. Let's go Hairless to the ship in Foundry 42 UK studio and let them introduce us to the brand new Apollo medical ship from Robert Space Industries. The RSI Apollo is a new medical ship. It's from RSI, which didn't get a new ship in a long while. We have two medical ships at the moment announced in the game, which is the Cutlass Red, which is basically the ambulance in our game, and the Endeavour with its hospital module, which is really massive and really end game. So we needed something in between. We had quite a short timeline on this one for a medium ship. So really early on, I did a quick sketch of the interior, passed it to um, concept artist and was like something like this and it kind of stuck basically um, and it works well with RSI styling. 
the ship still has its flow. You know, it's still quite sleek and sexy, but you know, it's it's got all that it's got that all that angularness to it. It's like a Lamborghini turn it into a spaceship. The RSI Apollo is basically like a small clinic that you can go to the edge of space. This has a capacity of six patients with six beds, uh, a crew of two at the front with two ejection beds. I do really like the idea that like this is your actual clinic as opposed to an ambulance that's flying around. This might actually be the place where that ambulance brings somebody out in space. That's cool. I, I really hope that there are they build missions that teach us to do that. I don't think, I think a lot of the sandbox gameplay is going to be niche unless the missions push us towards that. So I hope that for those kinds of weird situations, we do have a couple of missions that kind of let you know, hey, this is a way you can use this ship. It has a size two turret on the top of the ship at the rear, which is more a point defense turret rather than something made for dogfights or anything. And this is a remote turret. It has also 28 SCU of cargo at the back. And then you've got medical bay space. It's always that sort of fine line between sort of reality sci-fi and gameplay. So it's, okay, we need to basically spawn a player here, but we don't want him popping in. So the player will be delivered. There's a glass cover on top, sort of um, protecting the, the player. The thought process is that we'll have essentially like an, an opaque glass when there's nobody in it. And then you'll, you'll hear noises and probably lights will come on and the thing, the bed will activate and then a person will arrive. And the glass turns uh, transparent and you're like, okay, that, you know, the bed's occupied. At least that's You know, I wonder, I wonder why that's not how everything works right now. I guess that's something that they'll do when they want to do the polish pass on all these hospital beds. But right now you just pop into existence. That's a good idea to make it seem like they didn't pop in there. They were transported in some magical fairy dust way moment it's kind of like a self-healing unit so you'll have a, a disc that, that scans scans the person finds out what's wrong with them heals them and then then it opens up and off they go and so with this ship you'll be able to pick up people fix people up get them back <laughs> out the door you know so it, it can be look at these know, eyes look <laughs> right, can i get this in the character creator <laughs> Obviously, there'll be medical gameplay. That we plan is even if regular ships can do something with medical gameplay, or like a player could help other people in the future, you will need medical ships if you want really to pursue the medical career in the game. And the final result, I'm really happy with it. And it's just sort of going through it basically. And so that's just been a process of refinement, just pushing and pushing. And okay, add this, tweak this, you know, all the lines, generally, you know, you generally try and avoid parallel lines. We've worked hard to do a good layout that will please every player and that is really aesthetically pleasing as well. So I think this is a really good ship and this is bringing new kind of gameplay, so it looks good. Do you know what, I kind of like playing the medic often. So, you know, I, who, I'm not quite sure how this will turn out in our game you know but i just want to see it just want to see it in game we still aren't either so that's the apollo and real quick before we finish up on this ship let me let me show you guys what medical gameplay looks like real quick um medical gameplay star citizen because it's pretty underdeveloped right now <laughs> i've got a thumbnail or I, um, a guide that still pops up on it you know this is the first video that star citizen ever shared from us that I know of at least and I think you have to submit to their community hub but it was like a solid year and a half after I posted it um let's see it's just really weird timing I do appreciate the share I, I not that that's a bad thing it was just like so much longer afterward and I guess it's still relevant because this hasn't really been updated since 315 um for those who don't know 315 was a massive update for us. It was the first time we have an inventory. First time we ever had a healing tool. First time you could really ever do anything other than stab yourself with a med pen. In fact, you could this is the first time you could stab other people with a med pen. All these new drugs. Um, the injury system was introduced. So the idea of injuries being that... The idea of injuries is to complicate your FPS experience without taking you out of the game. So... 
One thing I really like about 322 that they've done is when your health gets closer to zero, it stops going down as much when you get shot and you just start taking more injuries. And the idea of injuries is, is supposed to be that you're taking repeated damage to the same limbs and they'll balance it out over time. But it allows for a medic to be on site personally to always know what to do for each injury. And there is a method of manually balancing the drugs. Right now they give you some auto method, but there's enough gameplay here to allow somebody to actually specialize in delivering the right solutions for the right problems. And I think they're going to go further than this with more unique kinds of injuries. But from here, um, really, we don't have too much. And I think that's why we haven't gotten the Apollo yet. Whenever we get the Apollos, probably when we see an update to the health system. And that's that's why I don't know if we're going to see that next year. If we were going to see the, a new health system next year, I think they probably would have talked about it during CitizenCon in some way. With all the FPS stuff going on. And especially with the radiation that they talked about. The actor status T2 system includes a variety of new elements such as hygiene, NPC status tracking, multiple bytes, DNA integ integrity, medical insurance, cybernetic limbs, and cloning. So that's our next update. Um... I don't think any of those things really point towards an Apollo. So I don't know if we're going to get this next year. But it's a cool ship. And it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. But how about we move on? You'd like to see a medical gadget, iPad-like thing that has a mini game to heal tear injuries in the field? Huh. Your primary role is combat medic, so you still hope for the day. Your job's going to get a lot more fun with these longer ground missions they're giving us. These these distribution center missions. I think combat medics are going to have a good old time with that. They should make ammo out of them because they penetrate armor. Pretty strong medical guns. Whoever thought of the Endeavor just let their imagination run wild when there was no reality check. <laughs> uh, yeah. Those were the troubled times. That was phase one. Did they say they paused development on the Apollo recently? I thought they said they picked up work on it again. I don't know. I actually can't confirm that. Um, that would be... So let's see if we can go to Shiny Tracker and see if... Shiny Tracker! See if that'll tell us. They did pick it up again? You just don't see its role in the game as it is, like you said. We'll need some NPC missions to push medical gameplay. NPC missions, but also the problem that faces medics is the same one that faces um, taxi drivers in that the game is so underdeveloped that people aren't asking for the services those people provide. So those people aren't willing to go and spend their time waiting to provide them. Like if you were in the Stanton system and there were 200 play no let's say there were 400 players persistently in the stanton system you'd be getting pinged and and the game was more complete right you had um tons of missions on all the planets but also there were npcs that could act as medics right so anytime an npc was near someone and they called for a medic that could come and get them and there were also a bunch of people just hanging out being medics at that point anybody who goes down is going to call for a medic they're not going to backspace and despawn or something like that, there's no expectation that you're going to get help. So I think people just kind of skip that. I know I do. When I go down, I generally don't want to wait because a lot of times the closest person is like 30 million kilometers away. And I think the same goes for being a taxi, being somebody who wants to get a ride. Nobody trusts you if you ask for a ride because nobody needs a ride. And until people do need rides, it's going to be weird. And really, in order to make that not weird, they need to work on the reputation and the missions. So I think that NPCs will help. But it's not just NPCs that are going to make it possible. Um, I hope. <laughs> It'll be cool. It'll certainly be cool if you can be a real medic that's out there in space waiting to get called up. What was I looking for though? Apollo. Apollo. 
So it says that they just stopped work. It doesn't say picked up again here. Yeah, refueling is kind of similar too. A real big thing holding us back for a lot of these different professions is reputation. I'm sure if you guys knew that you could hire a, a cargo hauler with just like a, a quick little mission, you know, you just type in a little beacon on your menu, send it out into the ether and get a cargo hauler with a five star reputation who's never had a bad job. They show up and they take your stuff over, sell it and give you the money like I think a lot of people would be completely fine with that if we had a system that actually tracked people. And we just don't, not yet, not good enough. One of those little things. Man, I, I hope they get that this year. All right, let's jump into the big list of ships. This is the most exciting part of this whole thing because we get to look at all the ships that they say in rapid succession are coming to the game in the next 12 months. And it's quite, it's quite a list. In the next 12 months deliver ev hear your input and i will just add to that as well oh. we aim to deliver everything you see in this video and more in the next 12 months so you were right about that rhino when it comes to the features they said they get most of it but with this they said that we're gonna get all these ships and more in the next 12 months For the record, I'm really hopeful that this is Tumbrel. Um, and I'm hopeful it's not treaded. I, I want this to be a hovercraft because I think it looks really cool as a hover bike. I hope it does. We already got these. The X1 came out with 322. Uh, a lot of theories that this is a medical Ursa. I think there have been some mentions of that but I'm not quite sure. But it would be interesting. They focused a lot more on ground gameplay and they're showing us more outposts that are actually within driving distance of each other now. This is, I think, just pointing towards the modularity of the Argo SR um, PTV. Um, no, not PTV. That's the gray cat. Uh, Argo MPUV. This is actually, for those who don't know, this is the MPUV cargo. Um... This is, you can either put a passenger transport or cargo transport in here. You'll probably also be able to detach and put like a 32 SCU crate on here. So this is more talking about modularity coming to the game next year. Uh, discussing a couple of different old videos. We're really just talking about the different ships we're expecting next year. You hope it's a medical Ursa, but realistically it's a racing Lynx. Oh, a racing Lynx. That sounds weird. I guess we have a racing G12. This is a big unknown. Nobody really knows what this is. It does look like, I mean, it, it's obviously, um, I won't say obviously, it looks RSI to me. I'm seeing the shape language of a Polaris and Constellation here. Um, I'm seeing a bit of the Dorito shape that we expect from RSI ships. I think this could be an RSI. It's kind of large. Uh, this dude is probably what, two meters tall? So this ship is probably like a lot of meters long. <laughs> um, this is a, this is going to be a surprise ship though next year. I'm guessing this is something, I don't want to say it's military, but it could be. You know what this actually looks a lot like to me? I think um, also the Nautilus, is that what I'm thinking of? I think I'm just looking at the landing gear there though. No, no, this, I don't think this is the Zeus. Um, the Zeus has a little bit of a different design than this. Tiny Carrick. <laughs> could be Anvil. It could be a lot of different things. You know, that's the thing is like, we can trust design language in terms of silhouettes, but this could turn out to be a lot of different companies. We've seen companies make ships that you wouldn't expect. RSI makes the Orion, like, kind of wild. Side ramp? Does this look like a side ramp? I think this is just a block out, sort of breaking up the shape language a little bit. Do 
Here we have a new ship from Mirai. This has been leaked, but we don't really touch on the leaks too heavily here. Um, and this one is also pretty large. This one's going to be... It, it's pretty obviously from Mirai. It looks like the Fury. And it's something. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but we'll see this sometime next year as well. Ah, <sighs> Okay. Let's talk about this. This is a little bit of a sleeper, not as commonly known, and it was introduced, man, it was introduced and it was so quickly, that is not how you spell that word. It was so quickly left behind as, as a discussion point at all. This is like, well, I'll let them explain to you all. This is another, I don't know if it's going to be a profession, but definitely a part of the gameplay in Star Citizen, a big part is hacking. And they have been very, very quiet about hacking over the last year and a half. Here's really the last time they talked about it in any level of depth. something that we've not done in Star Citizen before, you're going to be forcibly boarding another ship. <laughs> you know, with Mwah. the ships, it's always an advancement, right? So, the Anvil Legionnaire is our new ship. It's a uh, it's a boarding ship. It's for a two-man crew, and then eight people in the back, and basically, it's essentially for a hostile takeover. I think this is very. I mean, let's sort of let's be honest. This is your this is your alien. This is your dropship from Alien, right? With a little bit of Pelican thrown in there. Iconic looking ship. Which let's. We <laughs> did some that's where, really cool that's where the Pelican in, got like, it. The experimental phase. You know, we you know we had like sort of crazy crazy arms. Yo, they are going to have to release a uh, a coffee book with all of this art, right? All of these concepts and stuff that they've done. Oh my god, the freaking concept art book for this game is going to be insane. It's going to be crazy. I like pretty sci-fi pictures, okay? So I'm a, I'm a fan of those kinds of books. Things that could basically sort of latch onto ships. But, I mean, ultimately, because you've got to take into account uh, all the other ships that are in the universe that can be boarded, you kind of have to come up with a really sort of simple universal system which is kind of why on this legionnaire it is such such a simple um, uh, mechanic essentially the legionnaire fills uh, a gap in our lineup past our music for both i fill in the gap more lawful and less lawful careers where you need to take charge of another person's ships Traditional flow for ship to ship docking is the, the person who wants to dock to the other ship requests it from the parent ship and it's on the parent ship's uh, pilot to accept or deny that. Whereas the Legionnaire has onboard uh, hacking abilities in the hacking minigame to perhaps forcibly override that uh, accept. So it's fun to cross reference, right? It's, it's good health for everybody. What he's talking about here is Basically, as a legionnaire, you'll be able to get into a ship over each door and take over this sort of display. You'll be able to, if you're if you're really good, I'm sure there's going to be some level of like, oh, you got this far, you can control life support, you can control gravity, you can control components themselves. But the idea of hacking is that you'd basically be tricking the system into thinking that you're the person who deserves to have access. Um, you're spoofing an identity. And... It's going to give you engineering access. So this is also part of engineering gameplay, which is maybe why those two things have both been sort of aligned in their development branch. Um, but maybe they'll talk about that here too. Allowing it uh, to happen instead. For players that are on the, the, the lawful side, um, its prime use is bounty hunting. For those perhaps with more, more military focus, it is like Anvil's dedicated military boarding ship uh, and for those on the other side of the spectrum it piracy is its main main role so you are there able to uh, 
attach and board other ships and take their crew, goods, or ship itself. That's that's the Anvil Legionnaire. Uh, looking forward to this one because it's a, a ship that appeals to, to both sides of the law. Uh, it brings with it uh, a new side to an existing gameplay loop or existing gameplay loops. It expands upon them. And it's something that I know a lot of players have been waiting for a long time is that the ability to board other ships uh, forcibly because it sort of it takes away that safety a lot of players have at the moment where well, I'm, I'm safe on my ship no one's coming on here without uh, without destroying me uh, so people are really gonna have to start thinking twice when these things hit the persistent universe that's true for so many different things no, too in this game we're gonna have to this game's gonna get a lot more sketchy uh, not sketchy because like a lot of the systems coming online will protect us too. But this game is going to get a lot more real. We're going to experience a lot more things. Like hacking, be, be the idea of being hacked. Nobody's thinking about that. The idea of being boarded or even EMP'd or interdicted. When you get interdicted in this game, you're just like, really? <laughs> Seriously? Um, and all these types of things are going to become more easy to do and easy to get away from. But more common. So here's the Q&A on this ship. I think it gives a little bit more information on the actual capabilities of how this thing can hack and, and connect. So let's take a let's take a moment. Let's read through. Join me. Join me. What conditions must be met must be met for the legionnaire to hack? For example, does the target ship have to be immobilized and its shields overcome, or can it dock mid-flight? The answer was the conditions are the same as current ship to ship docking as featured on the constellation in Merlin. So the ships must be aligned and are oriented correctly. This can be done at any speed, although the slower the better. So basically, they're used, you're going to have to disable the ship somehow. EMP, probably. Um, Planned range. Somebody just asked what the planned range was. This is still to be determined based on testing, but expected to be relatively close, like a few, a, a few kilometers, not dozens or hundreds. So within the distance that you could be killed. And you'll probably have to be in SCM mode. How can players counter the Legionnaire's hacking ability? The hacking mechanic is intended to have gameplay for both sides, both hacking and counter-hacking. In instances with no other player present, attempting to board on NPC, uh, an NPC ship or non-legionnaire scenarios such as hacking environmental setups, that would be like hacking into a, a, a space station or a, an outpost or something, the counter role is performed by AI. Obviously a very good opportunity for AI blades would be Players who can just have an AI blade that's always counter hacking. Um, besides that, I'm guessing this would be the kind of thing that you would want to have for your co-pilot to be around. So like, while the pilot might be doing all pilot navigation stuff, the co-pilot might be in charge of, maybe your co-pilot's your engineer. You know, maybe they're monitoring systems, keeping hacking under control, missiles, all that kind of stuff. It's, I don't know if they're gonna have a standard way they expect us to do this, or if they're going to let us lay it out ourselves. I know they'll do the latter. I don't know if they'll do the former. Um, but I don't think you're going to have just somebody having a hacking role in your ship. So figuring out who does what is going to be an interesting challenge in this. Let's see what else they say about it, though. Um, what can be hacked on the target vessel? For example, will we be able to disable or activate self-destruct, open and close airlocks and manipulate thrusters? They say... These systems are dedicated to specific and directed tasks of overriding and overcoming the docking and air traffic control systems of the target ship, which is which in universe is sufficient challenge by itself. They are not able to address the other command systems of the target ship. So when it comes to hacking the ship with the engineering like I was talking about, that is not going to be the case for this ship. That's just normal hacking. My bad. Good thing we read the Q&A. But um, hacking will be something that you are using... So really, this isn't a hacking ship, it's a boarding ship. Hacking is just part of the boarding process for them here. That's actually a, it's a good distinction I will remember to make too. Has anything been said about the Odyssey? No. No, I don't think the Odyssey will be coming next year. For this ship to be properly implemented, they'll need to get a lot of other things into the game. Ship armor, mapping, and better scanning of vessels, component destruction, implement something that incentives... Boarding on so that borders don't just get blown away. Should attacking the boarding vessel damage the victim itself? I think maybe. I don't know if they need to have all the scanning stuff. 
because really right now you can scan and and ask for boarding so that's not too much of a problem but i do agree that like there needs to be an incentive to board ships and i think people do you see a lot of pirates who already try to board ships in different ways um i think they can probably rewrite the 890 jump mission so that it requires you to do forced boarding after this ship comes out like there are places this will fit in i think just a matter of making sure that docking actually works the Legionnaire fits in extra small hangers and pads, so it's a pretty small ship. I think that's smaller than the Vol um, the Valkyrie. It can be used against ships that do not have an airlock, such as the Crusader Hercules. At this point in time, we are only committing to it being able to breach dedicated airlock entry points. Good to know. Will the docking tunnel on the Legionnaire provide any cover for its boarding team? These There are deployable covers built into the tunnel. That's cool. Does it have crew facilities? No. This is a short-range ship. Complete a mission and return to base. What equipment can be transported for the boarding team? There is space for heavy and special weapons and heavy armor. Working with the core gameplay pillar to ensure that if heavy armor cannot be worn in the seats, as not all seats will have this restriction. That is, that is a thing, by the way. Some seats you won't be able to sit in with heavy armor. Then it is the least impactful place to allow quick equipping before boarding. You cannot disguise yourself. Um, hacking and boarding mechanics unique to the Legionnaire or will be available to other electronic warfare platforms. The com combination of hacking and boarding is part of the Legionnaire's default setup. So while other ships may be able to get the hacking ability, it would be at, the, I think the MSR is going to be able to hack in order to steal some of the data they're looking for. Uh, it would be at the cost of other blade-controlled electronic warfare war roles. So... I think these blades are the subcomponents of your computer and will share space with AI blades as well. The Legionnaire has it built in as opposed to these other ships using blades. For example, you could upgrade the Vanguard Sentinel to support ATC hacking, but you'd need to manually EVA over to board after that because they don't have the boarding tunnel. Boarding is such fun gameplay. You love Titan mode in 2042. Yeah, that was sick. Any guess if the Arasha will be built as part of the RSI build effort since it has a similar design? They didn't say anything about it. I don't know if they've got plans for that anytime soon. You see the size and type of ship being stored on an Idris or similar ships? Yeah, you can maybe put this on a Polaris. All right, how maneuverable will it be compared to the Cutlass Steel Prowler, Vanguard, Hoplite, and Valkyrie? Maneuverability will be closest to the steel. Wow, so a cutlass, huh? But could be adjusted. How heavy is the armor compared to other ships? It's designed to take significant fire on approach, so it's relatively heavily armored compared to other dropships and much closer to the other anvil ships, such as the Terrapin. Yo, you better watch it. Better watch it. You're not, getting, not stepping on my Terrapin's territory. Who controls the turrets and shields while the Legionnaire is in flight? The co-pilot is in control of one turret as well as the hacking system. Ooh, co-pilot's got things to do. And will the boarding mechanic be possible with an NPC crew or do we need real players? NPC co-pilots will be able to do the role if no human is present, as this is required for the counter-hacking gameplay on NPC ships regardless. Does the Legionnaire be able to use blades to increase its hacking power? Yeah, NPCs will be able to transition between ships, so I don't think that's a something to worry about so there we are this is the valkyrie boarding ship and one that is stated to be coming in the next 12 months we'll have to wait and see yeah a little bit of cheering uh this one is the Z is this the zeus i believe this is the zeus the, the zeus the zeus <laughs> Did I say Valkyrie? Van Legionnaire. <laughs> this is the Zuzu. And for this one, we actually don't even have to leave this video. We're going to jump back to this 37 minutes. Let's drop back and see what they have to say about the Zeus because they're real excited about this one. And this is coming from um, Turbulent. I'm, I'm going to do a little plug here. Because the Zeus does have a little bit of a, a place in one of my recent videos. I mentioned earlier for you guys coming, coming supporters on YouTube. If you scroll down, oh, 
Oh. If you scroll down to members only videos here, the most recent one is all about Turbulent and their goal to build out star systems for the game. I give them a little bit of props for the Zeus, I'm not going to lie. I think that even though this ship is bigger than the Spirit and maybe a little bit more applied, um, I don't I don't see this ship falling behind at all. I think this will come out by the time they want it to next November. And I'm excited to see what it does for the game because this seems like one of the most quintessential two to three person ships they've released so far. But here's one of the other ones that they want to have out next year. Should be one that gets picked up by quite a few people. I'm sure at some point you'll end up on this ship in the future in the game. The RSI Zeus. Hold on. In 2130, uh, RSI made some major kind of advancements in quantum technology. They developed or they released the first ship that was kind of available to the mass market that had quantum capability. This kind of mid-range explorer uh, really put RSI at the kind of forefront of ship development. Now, it was a really good thing. You know, it really kind of boosted them as a company, but that doesn't, it wasn't kind of all good. The original RSI Zeus had some major issues with its whole integrity. That being said, there's always kind of been this uh, demand for RSI to release the Zeus. It's kind of had this cult following that's grown up over the years. I'm kind of very happy to announce today that RSI have kind of taken that challenge on board. Um, they've developed a whole new vehicle that is designed to ferry a whole new generation of travelers across our universe. Visually, it's something that pays homage back to the original Zeus and something that's really uh, is, is justified to have that, that name. And I'm even happier to say it exceeds all current safety standards. Okay, so and I'm, I'm sorry. This is all marketing. <laughs> Show us the ship. So uh, we are going to hand over to Elwyn and Mark to go through this. And you can see there's three of them there. So we're going to do a bit of a deeper dive onto these three ships now. So over to Mark and Elwyn. Oh. Right, let's give them a warm welcome. Come on, let's go, let's go. Hi there, everyone. My name is Mark Gibson. I'm the lead vehicle content designer at Card Imperium Games. And I'm all Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Owen Bachelor, vehicle art director in North America. What do you guys think? Looks like a spaceship. Awesome. All right, well, let's take some time now and take a look at this classic RSI design and see how we've reimagined it. So when we decided we wanted to tackle the Zeus, we had to consider what direction RSI would take it in if they were going to do it today. We couldn't just remake the original Zeus because although it was obviously a massive piece of history, all it was really used for was transporting and moving around. So we had to consider exactly what we wanted to do with the ship. In the end, we decided to go for three variants, allowing you to pick which way you want to actually play the game. So what we're going to do is talk about those variants that we decided on in the end and go into a bit more detail with them. First of all, we have the ES. The ES is the essential. It's the long range exploration version of the Zeus. It's designed to let you go out for a long time and explore the universe. Man, they love using the uh, the E word for. I feel like there's not really much that says this is explore. I mean, I guess this is exploration in the same sense that like the Cutter Rambler is, and that it just has range and living situation. A robust radar package. I don't know if that means it's got higher higher level components or not. That could help. But I feel like I always hear exploration, and I'm like, but why exactly? I do think that this ES is probably like the best sort of like starting general purpose ship, but they didn't really make a general purpose Zeus. It feels like the ES was as close as you get. Excited for cargo running jobs. Size three radar. Mm, let's see. I guess what would be equivalent to that then? A freelancer Durr? But that's not really, see, yeah. So a Freelancer Dur would be like a, a range-based non-exploration kind of ship, right? And it only has a size one scanner. So you could say that it definitely leans more into that exploration focus if it's out doing another 
similar size ship, but I think the freelancer might be, let's see, 38 by 23, as opposed to, Forty-six by thirty-four, so it's actually it's quite a bit bigger than the Freelancer. Definitely a bigger ship with a size three radar. Actually, do, why doesn't it say it's a scanner? See now, all this nomenclature and stuff. That's what I was saying yesterday. Don't trust the website. This is the wiki, but it probably still pulling from the website. That they there's different words here. We got the scanner, and then the other one we have a radar. I guess they're using different specifications on this site. It's all confusing. Um, but the, the ship itself, the ES, seems like a really good option for your general purpose player. I think... Isn't the component called the radar, but it can do scanning and pings? I thought that was how they were talking about doing it. We have our computer component and our radar component, and then the radar can conduct a scan or a ping. The ES is pretty, and it'd be more into it if it didn't have a freelancer, if you didn't have a freelancer dirt. Freelancer dirt does seem like a good alternative to this, actually. But then we got the next one, the Mark, which is for bounty hunting, I guess, with an EMP. Next up, we have the Mark. The Mark is the bounty hunter version. This is there for you so you can actually go out find your targets and bring them back. It's also been purposely outfitted so that you have all the tools that you need to disable, capture, and bring them home. Finally, the last version we're gonna talk about is the CL, the Clipper. Might be a name people are familiar with if they know much about Maritime. This is the cargo version of the Zeus Mark II. This is designed so that you can move your goods around the universe. Now this thing's crazy. Of the three variants, the the cargo one to me, this is gonna be nuts to see what people do with this because this could make a killing. Depending on how they do the jump points, this could be one of the highest capacity cargo ships that passes through a medium sized jump point. We'll have to see. It's definitely gonna put out a lot lower emissions than similar sized uh, hauling capacity ships, but they'll talk more about it here move your goods around the universe. Of the three variants, the Zeus Essential is the one that harkens back the most to the original design with the original white on black paint job and the vertical stabilizers. We also worked to maintain the silhouette of the original but brought that forward to modern day RSI design with tons of technical detail and layered panels. And on the underside, the landing gear and the underslung turret as well as the enter I am happy to say that I'm not super jazzed about this design. I'm just, I'm whelmed. I think it's a solid design, but it's not something that I'm jumping for, and I like that. I like not liking ships. You know? It's like, makes the ones you like a little bit better. But yeah, this thing's obviously more complex than like a spirit. Look at the interior here. Pack a lot into it to give everything you need when you're doing the deep space exploration. You have a fairly comfortable habitation recreation area so that when you're out away from home, it's not too unpleasant. In addition to that, the rear room has a 32 SU cargo capacity, as well as being able to fit a cyclone. So if you do decide to land our planet, you can have a look around. Talking about the loadout, it's a ship designed for three crew. It comes with four size two shield generators, two size two power plants, two size two coolers, and two size four pilot controlled weapons. And obviously the lower turret that Elva mentioned earlier is a size three remote turret. Now the Zeus Mark was always designed from the beginning to be a sleek and aggressive bounty hunter. As such, the black paint will help you stay hidden in the shadows until you're ready to strike. We do also like the paint. redesigned the spine in order to embed If you could change those yellows to reds, I'd love this. Quantum dampener, which allows us on the art side to really crank up the level of detail on the exterior. We've also added a second remote turret on the top. Looking at the interior of the Mark, you see that the habitation's taken a little bit of a hit. It moved forward, but what we've been able to add in exchange for that is a massive armory. Let you take How all is this smaller than the Spirit? I don't understand. Like, I'm looking at the cockpit. The Spirit's beds are, like, right here, and then it has a hallway and then a cargo bay. That cargo bay can't be this big, right? Hold on, I gotta, I gotta look this up. I can't imagine this thing is... 
I know they were close. That's just insane. <laughs> they packed so much into this ship. 46 meters in length. They're like the same length. How the f how? How is this possible? RSI. This is the difference between a, country, a company that's been making ships for 900 years and, and Crusader. I love Crusader, but the idea that this, that this fits into the same space as a freaking spirit is nuts. What the actual f equipment you might need while you're tracking your target along with this. Looking into the rear, we actually have a dedicated area just for the actual um, bounty hunter pods, similar to what you'll see in the Cutlass Blue. So you can stack up the pods and take multiple people back with you. It has less SU than the ES. It only has 16 SU. And it does have a different loadout with the components, only having three size two shield generators. Like Owen said, it does have a top mounted forward facing turret so that you can put the pressure on the target as you're chasing them. The EMP and QD drive are designed to stop the target escaping once you've caught up with them. Now, because the Zeus Clipper focuses on hauling cargo, we've decided to lean into the industrial aesthetic. We've covered the exterior with a warning strip paint job, uh, and we've covered the exterior with more technical detail and armor plating. In addition to that, it comes with a remote tractor beam, which is mounted on the rear to the side of the ramp to make it easier to haul cargo in and out of the cargo hold. We've also added thrust capacity to the base of the wings. As huh. you can see, there is- I didn't catch that before. Thrust capacity to the base of the wings. Does that mean, um, Mr. Endomi, thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. Thanks for the support. Much love to you. I hope you're having a wonderful week. Happy New Year's to you. The base of the wings. So does that mean they added VTOL in here? Is that what he's talking about right here? That that thrust? Let's see if that's on the other model. No, it is not. So they added little... I don't know if you could call those VTOL. Oh, that, that's right here on the ES2, though. So yeah, I don't know... I don't know what he means like that, but maybe this thing has VTOL so it can stay hovering in atmospheric flight for longer. We've also added thrust capacity to the base of the wings. As you can see, there is an absolutely massive rear to it compared to the others. The habitation areas have been massively pushed so that you don't get much space, but we can get way more cargo in. It actually has four times the cargo capacity of the S coming in at 128 SUs of cargo. That's crazy. This one also features three size two shield generators. And like I mentioned, it has a size three tractor beam to make it much easier to get those cargo containers in and out as you're actually playing. What do you think? <laughs> so last year, we introduced the Spirit. And if anyone that may be playing on their live, live the last couple of days might have seen a new ship adding to the verse, the A1. We hope to follow a similar route with the Zeus where we announce it today and then in about a year's time, hopefully it'll be ready to reveal to the public to actually play with. But this isn't just a concept. We're not just going to show you some images. The Zeus is actually an act of white, dot, white box development right now. Do you just want to have a look? Shall we? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do we have any Caterpillar entrances into ships? It's interesting. You saw the ST variant, the Space Tomato variant? I saw that. <laughs> All right, so as you guys have seen with the Spirit and with the many ships we've released thus far, our ships can, when they're finished, look absolutely gorgeous. But before any of them get to that point, they have to grow through a very specific development process. And this is the first stage in that process. We call this white box. At this point, we've taken the concept, ripped it to shreds, and then reassembled it and plugged it all back together within the editor so that we can get a real good look at what players are gonna see when they finally get this game. At this stage, with the Zeus, we've already ripped out all the thrusters, we've ripped out the landing gear, the turret, the seats, the beds, all of the interior spaces, plug those guys back in, and we have what you see here. This is definitely niced up for a white box. So again, the beginning of the process. 
At this point, we're able to jump in, start throwing in cargo, interacting with doors, getting in and out of beds, maybe in and out of toilets. See, like, look at this, dude. That What the... I don't understand. <laughs> Somebody explain this to me. I guess I guess there's a lot of space for that cargo bay in the back of the C1. But like in the C1, this is the cargo bay, right? In and, and then right beds, here, maybe in you'd be going into that small hallway. Yeah. Not toilets. And then that small hallway ends like basically and right here. And then there's a cockpit. How is it? I think an overall sense of what it feels like to interact with the vehicle. And it is very common that in this stage, we will make some adjustments from the original plan. As an example, on this ship, yeah, the airlock door in the back, the I think. decision to expand the center corridor, add a little bit more space to the rooms. And as a result, that's going to make it much smoother experience for players to traverse the, in the, the interior of the ship, as well as for AI to traverse the interior of the ship. We've also expanded the main airlock that leads to the enter exit ladder. And up here in the cockpit, we've separated the co-pilot seats a tad bit just to allow players to get in and out a little easier. So with white box, not the prettiest stage in the process, but it is essential that we nail this because it means we'll be able to deliver a beautiful ship that is also extremely fun to play. So yeah, that is, that is mostly what we know of the Zeus so far. Um, and good points made in chat. The C1 has that weird airlock door in the back, that for sure. Um, takes away some space. It also has the component area in the cockpit. There are reasons to see when it's as long as it is. Um, it's a different use of space and they'll balance it based on that use of space and what it's meant for. I'm mostly just, you know, I'm just causing a fuss. They're two different ships and there are going to be other ships in this size range that probably target different use cases as well and, and styles. I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm so excited that they're focusing so hard on this sort of area of ship development. Now, that was our Zeus here. And uh, let's see what else they've got. Retaliator. I made a video about this on the second channel. You can check it out. Just type in Space Tomato 2 Retaliator Modularity. I think this was really just them showing that they will be bringing modularity to the Retaliator. If you don't feel like going and checking out that video, I will give you like a very, very quick look at why I believe that to be the case. Um, ooh, realtor modules. <laughs> uh, if you don't use it and you want to do research on Star Citizen, make sure to check out starchives.org. Also taking donations. Let's see if I can find this though. You know what? I might actually not be able to find this, but here. Um, listen to uh, this. But, um, all right, and then I'm going to assume it's the same answer for like the underside pods. The yeah, still still planned. Um, they they are those ones are actually technically blocked, um, but that's the the same tech blocker as we have with the retaliator modules. So uh, when we have that. Uh, retaliator modules will probably be the first thing that come online using it and then we can go back through the the catalog of ships that have that same sort of modular room functionality and implement that all right um uh let's see what else do we got as far as the flight ready ships go uh uh okay Defender. so that's that's just a little bit a little itty bitty but i actually we can go back to one of the vehicles we were watching earlier listen to this it says, has there been any progress on modularity since it was last talked about? Yes. Good news at last. <laughs> Good news. Well, I'll, we'll be Good the judge news. of that. We'll be the judge of that. So, uh, right, chat. <laughs> you on the track, guys. Come on. Yep. Uh, so, with the development of the whole C, uh, we've pretty much figured out the last hurdle. And, in fact, Chris is responsible for the test that I got him to do uh, for it, uh, where we can have object containers, which is the interior collection of assets, loaded as an item, loaded onto the ship, because that's how the rear of the whole sea is attached to the ship and moves with it. Uh, what had stopped us technically uh, going any further with this was uh, items inside those object containers couldn't talk to the vehicle it was connected to. Right. So the example of the retaliator, 
the torpedo droppy arms, they're actually part of the exterior of the ship currently because that's the only way they can work. So if we allowed you to swap the modules, no matter what module you had, there'd be a pair of torpedo arms dangling through the middle of it. Uh, Chris did a test where he attached a load of missile racks and torpedoes to the inside of the back of the hull sea, <laughs> which is not going to ship with it. <laughs> Wait, you're saying we're not having a torpedo hull sea? Yeah. There, there is a shelf that says, do not submit in very large places. <laughs> um, and the pilot had full control of that, and they could fire them. So after the whole sea ships and we found any more quirks with that setup, we're in a position where, to my knowledge, touch wood, technically there's nothing stopping us doing modularity now. That was the last big hurdle for it. There's nothing technically stopping us from nothing, doing it, but there's nothing, also priorities and yeah, things logistics. And building a team. <laughs> nothing technically stopping us. Yeah, nothing, nothing yeah. technically stopping us. Yeah. 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 So, what I, so what I heard was that whole CMX uh, at Citizen Gun. Oh, yeah. Just full of size nine torpedoes. So nothing's really <laughs> stopping the them at this point from getting into modularity, um, which is why it, it seems like they probably are working on it, and they're probably that's what they're kind of hinting at. I don't know if I'll be able to find the videos I'm looking for though for you guys. Um, there was a video they did a little while ago where they showed us specifically. Yeah, this is too long ago. Pretty sure I have the videos myself, but I really, I, I did want to get the actual um, audio because they they say it themselves. Hey, this is the last stuff that we're doing. Not this, this. So this is the Retaliator. This is 2021, maybe I can find it. This is the Retaliator modules. They had them all done in terms of art and stuff. Like they're, they're literally just waiting for the tech. And what I just showed you was them confirming that the tech is done. So modularity is coming. It's, it's like one step away from confirmed for next year, I think. And these kinds of things where they go and they drop a retaliator, which is already a made ship, which yes, might be getting a gold standard next year, but show our other ships that aren't on this list. I think it's a pretty obvious, you know, uh, point towards modularity. Same with the... MPUV. They both kind of are headed in that direction. I just wish like I had something that could tell me what video this was. April 2021. Or not April. Um, August 2021. Don't see anything there. Maybe this? They will hey! Be <laughs> nice! All brought up to current Oh standard. man, it's cool when that works out, huh? All right, let's see what they were saying about these back in 2021. And then because we'd lost a, a, a lift on that side, we then realized we had to make the lift on the other side slightly larger to accommodate essentially two lifts worth of people. So then you've now just got one lift on that side of the ship to get in and a docking collar on the other side to get in thing that the retaliator has is the customizable room modules and there's a cargo module front and back a dropship module at the front they were all brought up to current standards so when a modularity comes on as a swappable item they are good to go that's where we're at with the the first gold standard ships obviously going to go through all the ships but we are going to focus on the ones that feature heavily in squadron 42 first see that's ships, really key we're... like this is a big update to the retaliator they're doing this Still isn't just the modularity and this is the whole gold standard update they're moving doors they're putting new airlocks in the ship's changing quite a also bit took the time to look at the central room and thought can we improve on this we decided to remove the top and bottom docking collars and go for a side. And honestly, it, I forget how big the Retaliator is because it, it feels like a one to two person bombing ship, but this thing's huge. Look at the size of this room. Like, it's a wide ship compared to what it kind of looks like. And then you look at the person, you're like, oh, wait. Oh, that's right. It's a big one. So it's a cool ship. I think it's really ugly. <laughs> I'm going to lie. The Retaliator is one of the weirdest looking ships, in my opinion, but... Uh, it's it's Aegis, and they, they figure out a way to make it look okay. I look forward to seeing modularity in the game, though. That's that's what's so important about this announcement to me. Ships like the Hull Sea and Endeavor and Carrick and uh, a lot of other ones are going to start to have a lot more functionality. It's like seeing tractor beams come in. A whole bunch of other ships are just going to suddenly get more useful.
Zerbiku. Haha, <laughs> and then we have... The one everybody loves. So the Polaris is 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 the big boys adventure and we're gonna we're gonna get to this update but let's go back a little bit to the previous updates so we can watch the little how this story unfolds i'd like to take you for a walk through the polaris history it's a it's a weird one we're gonna we're actually gonna skip a lot of the history but i'm gonna start with the announcement because the announcement's kind of cringy Rude. <laughs> I'm probably a little bit rude. Where is it? Here we go. Um, this was first of verse. No, 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 no. I've got to. I got to give you the real deal. What was this? 2016. Check this out. Citizen Con 2016. 2016 was a rough year for us in Citizen Con. This was the year that uh, we got the sandworm, of course, that everybody knows and loves. Um, this was also the year we got this. This yikes aroni roadmap where they told us that we were gonna <laughs> where they told us that we would have jump points by the end of 2018. This one's always just gonna hurt. And I'm always gonna go back to this because man. It just comes, it goes to show how much better they are at this. But they thought we'd get jump points in, in 2018. Um, but something else we also got back then was this really, really strange sort of just random ad. I'll let you guys sit through this along with me. Um, hey, it's young Benoit. Messaging, of course, I was chatting with John earlier, so it was right here. I can actually check this out. Settings. This and is so, Spectrum. They're showing off Spectrum. Turbulence actually built a lot of that, so... Uh, they were presenting it at this time. And focal uh, okay, so the soon trademark in this case is pretty close. Uh, we can tell us to be able to inform them is an orc. Come on. Holy crap, I went far back. Here we go. All right, so this just randomly occurred like halfway through this Citizen Con. One year ago, our lives were shattered. Also, keep in mind, most people would think this is a trailer. Because the game was supposed to launch later. But we have not forgotten. in the face of the Vandal threat. We have dedicated ourselves to creating the universe we have always wanted. A safe and secure UEE for all. Thanks to your continued support in the sale of war bonds, the UEE is proud to announce the Militia Mobilization Initiative authorizing the sale of certain military-grade ships to ensure that civilian militias are properly equipped to defend the Empire in times of need. We will ensure a brighter future for our children. At the forefront of that effort is RSI's newest ship, the Polaris. Combining devastating firepower and searing speed, the Polaris-class Corvette is effective against a wide variety of aggressors and scenarios. From delivering humanitarian aid to tactical operations, the Polaris' ability will make it an essential part of any fleet for years to come. But the Polaris is only the tip of the spear for this grand initiative. A full line of other ships are now available for a limited time. And to support faster mobilization and operational effectiveness, 
fleet formations are being offered in discounted, pre-designed ship teams. So stand in solidarity with the brave men and women who put their lives on the line and join them in protecting the dream that is the UEE, UEE military the call 2016. Yes. So obviously they got a lot more subtle with with the marketing. I mean, like this is this is marketing. Yeah, this whole thing with the Zeus was the same thing but much better <laughs> We're like hey buy this but the polaris caught fire after this um people freaking love this ship people still love this ship it's a very cool ship and it does a lot of cool things and they've been updating us a little bit about but y'all hear that <laughs> they've been updating us about this over the last i want to say year or so and up next in this episode when was this from? But up next, the our favorite Jared presents about a year ago, actually now. Um, a little update on the Polaris. I'll show you this and then we'll get to the very most recent update on this thing. For those who don't know, this is just a very military oriented ship. It's got torpedoes that are like bigger than an Aurora almost. Uh, it, they've, it's got a lot of space for crew. It looks cool. It's a fiery death Dorito. It's just a general big crowd favorite. So here's what we know about the Polaris. The long-awaited, often rumored, Polaris concept model internal layout rework. Now, it's not a series of new concept images like those that were created for the 600i we showcased a few weeks ago, but this is a down-in-the-rough 3D Max model look at the reworked concept mesh to explore the new internal layout so potential pirates can begin plotting out their boarding actions. Enjoy. The Polaris is obviously a really, really old concept. It's been around for a very, very long time. It was one of the more early ships that we did the exterior concept art for. The Polaris came out in, I think, 2017. Uh, lots of features have been added to the game since then that were not known about at that time or couldn't be planned for if they were known about. Like a lot of the older ships, the interior just didn't fit. It, we couldn't get the size, the scale, or the metrics for how we would want it to appear to actually fit inside the frame that we had. We've really now locked in how we want the interior layout, what the impact of the exterior means, um, but it's still the same Polaris that everyone originally saw and, and, and fell in love with. It just means that now it's kind of fit for purpose, whereas with the initial concepting phase and, and initial layout, it wasn't quite where we needed it to be. Samesies, as in we didn't have it in our hands remains pretty much the same beyond it has got larger to accommodate some of the interior changes. The role is the same, the key visuals are the same. You may notice, again, some like panel line changes or turret updates, but fundamentally you look at the, the Polaris now versus then, it's almost indistinguishable uh, aside from that scale change and the role remains identical to what it was before. Moving on the inside, Dude, however, look we at have the a freaking firepower on this thing. Like, you got two turrets up here. These look like size fours. Maybe. Maybe size threes. These look like size fours. One here, one here, one here. If you're in the front of this ship, <laughs> that's terrifying. And then they've got another turret further back here on the side. Look at that. Yeah, like, if you're in front of this ship, look at how many different turrets can just be facing forward firing. Plus these torpedoes, which we'll see soon, which are huge. There's got to be a backwards facing turret or two as well. I don't know. That, that would be a crazy weak spot. I think that might be a turret there. But this ship's nuts, man. I th and it said 24 crew or something like that. Good Lord. My hope, and I just like, I, I'd like to take a step up on my sand, my sandbox, my <laughs> soapbox. I will step into the sandbox, allow me. My hope for these ships, my ultimate hope for capital ships in this, in this game isn't for me to go and command 40 people. <laughs> I hope that happens someday. That would be cool. My hope is that they set up mission chains, whether it's from mission givers or from joining a faction. Like, let's take uh, the Crimson Fleet faction from, from Starfield, yeah? I really hope that you can do something where, like, you, you come to a system and you see a recruiting station on the city, right? And the UEE is there, and they're like, you can sign up. You walk up to them, you think it's just a prop, like, sure, whatever. You sign up, and you get a mission. And in this mission, you're supposed to report up to the space station, 
You go and you join on a Polaris and you get to choose a role on this military Polaris that goes, just goes around different star systems, doing patrols, running into NPC pirates, getting into dogfights. And the whole while you get to choose to be like a pilot in the, in the, in the dogfighter on the ship. Maybe you get to be like one of the engineers or you get to be somebody who's helping with like logistics or repairs. I can't explain how much I want this game to just say, we're going to give you spaceships that you can be crew on and that can be your story. Because that's, I don't I don't think there's a better way for a space sim to work than that. Uh, I love to fly spaceships, but I feel like everybody wants to at some point be the crew in a in on the Enterprise or on Serenity or something like that. Yeah, like a tour of duty in in whatever profession you're interested in. Or maybe you want to do that in a city or a space station. I don't know. But it seems like they have so much opportunity here to allow us to do things that don't require flying. Make them moving space stations. Do it. Make freaking space stations move. Let's be the expanse. Let's just move a whole asteroid. Let's, yeah, come on. Grim Hex. Grim Hex on the run. Quantum traveling Grim Hex. Let's go. L versus then. It's almost indistinguishable uh, aside from that scale change and the role remains identical to what it was before. Moving on the inside, however, we have a completely different story. Although there wasn't much seen for what the inside was going to look like, we had to remove a lot of that and just start again. We fit the entirety of the interior inside of it while taking into account the change in component sizes. Where we went from size zero all the way up to size 10, um, whereas now we've got much more kind of uh, distinct categorization of our components. We've now got a, a capital shield generator, capital power plant, capital cooler, all to support the actual size of the ship and the scale of it, especially for what its role is within the actual universe. So talking layout, we don't have concept images for every single room within the ship, but I can give you an estimation of what you can expect. Show us the torpedoes. So you start from the bridge, which has been opened up a bit to give you a bit more space and visibility. Behind that, we then have the escape pod section where there's escape pods for the crew to be able to quickly evacuate the ship. Moving behind that, we then have the captain's quarters and office, as well as the CO's uh, office. Behind that again, we then have the armory. Moving further back, we have the crew bunk room and baths and showers. I actually really Plus like this, that, this room. Then... This is a cool the way that the hallway forms out of the the bunks and makes this shape is really cool i don't know if this is a standard design on ships but like ship like uh water ships i know we don't do spaceships that much we're not quite there yet room and baths and showers across from that we then have the rec area so it's, it's where the food is it's where the, the relaxation is for the actual crew of the ship moving back further we then come towards the, the center of the ship where the actual hangar of the Polaris is. And that's had a bit of a size increase, so it's very comfortable to fit things like a Sabre in it now. Oh, that's good. It seems so small before. On the left and right hand... See, I bet you could fit a val uh, um, Legionnaire in here. Inside, on one side, you have the medical facilities. On the other, you have the holding cells for any prisoners or wrongdoers that you might get hold of. And then moving back, you then have the entrance of where engineering is, which spans about two decks. A small section of it is at the rear, which houses some of the more standard components. Then the lower deck of engineering holds the large capital components for the Polaris. Moving back forward then from the rear, we then have the cargo hold. Moving forward from the cargo area, we then have the torpedo room, which has all of the torpedoes stored and an okay. operation station that uh, it needs to make. Can we just like talk about how big these torpedoes are? Like, like, this is actually bigger than a, a starter ship, or at least longer. Look at this. From, like, right here to... Hold on. There, I actually have, I think, concept image that makes this look a lot... It's a lot clearer, this relationship. Here it is. Like, look at this torpedo compared to this man. I don't want to get hit with one of these. I'll show you what it looks like when you get hit with one of these later. It's not fun. It's not going to feel good. And turn on your work down there. So the Polaris is concept complete. We're pretty happy with the updates to it internally and hope you are as well. Uh, and now we are just at the point of scheduling when we can jump it into production. 
It's naturally a, a large ship, slightly larger than it was. Uh, so it's not going to be a quick endeavor, but we think it's going to be a, a pretty fruitful one by the end of it. He said endeavor. The lessons that we've learned over the years from the evolution. Folks, he said endeavor. Endeavor confirmed 2024. John Crew said it. Of making ships and their interiors have all come into play when we've done the Polaris. And I can't wait for people to be able to see it. So yeah, uh, as was asked in the Chatteroni, uh, Eric Stake, this is a capital ship. This is a capital ship, and it's also an anti-capital ship. This thing is meant specifically to go up against very large ships. That's why it has, huh, you know, large torpedoes. Let me show you a little bit more about it. This is their foray into capital ships. This is their finally getting started with actually building... Capital ship gameplay is going to be almost a different form of playing this game, and they're finally starting to look into that as the single-player experience is fleshing out a little bit more and becoming more solid and so the polaris is probably going to be a testing ground for them <clears throat> to see how true capital ship gameplay plays it's also though not necessarily the first thing they're going to be doing that on like the hammerhead the carrick the hercules um all of those are going to offer us capital ship kind of scenarios in terms of engineering and stuff but the polaris will be the first one where they can start to really see how big groups of people work together and hopefully they can use that in real time to make capital ship gameplay unique from anything else there is on the market. Yeah, battles will be too big with one shot guns. There's not going to be any one shot guns. I mean, there might be one shot guns, but the challenge is going to be getting close enough and getting into position and making sure that the other team is disabled to, to use them, you know? I want to touch again on like, yeah, why are we doing an RSI ship? Like 890 is a capital ship, but it's not. It, they didn't put it in the game to build on capital ship gameplay. They just put it in the game. Well established art style for RSI in our in our universe, um, and it gives us the ability to kind of skip, or train up newest members of the teams on something that's kind of quite a known element. That is absolutely not the only benefit, though. The way we are like planning on tackling the Polaris is not tackling it as one ship, but actually we want to tackle, well, anyone that knows our backlog knows we have a number of large RSI ships on there. And our kind of plan is that we tackle that as a family of ships. We don't just tackle one of them and then we go off and do something else for six months, a year, come back and do another one, something else, come back and do another one. We want to tackle them all together, one after the other. And what that really allows us to do is just kind of streamline our development process. We're able to you know, for our more common areas of the ship, we're able to build kits that we're confident in that we can reuse and we can make the most out of them. And then that allows us to focus our development time and our efforts really on the much more unique and the important and exciting areas of each ship. It, tackling them as a family kind of allows us to expedite their development. We leverage the experience that we've got within the team. And it just allows us to, like I say, streamline everything. So. First up, we've got the Polaris. Next up, we've got the Galaxy. And then we've got the Perseus. And that kind of closes out our, most of our large RSI ships. And then we can you know, see what we want to take on after that. Well, I, I think that's pretty much everything we want to talk about today. Um, however, before we go, we're, we're going to... Torsten's already stolen the, the predictable joke here. So we'll do one last thing to show you guys. So let's have a look at the current state of the Polaris in engine in its white box state. All right, so I don't think, well, I think it's possible we'll see the Polaris this next year. I don't think it's guaranteed. They're shooting for it and it could happen, but I think it could slip. The other ships they mentioned there, the Galaxy and the Perseus, no freaking way. No, nah, I don't think so. Um, Spericado, thank you so much for gifting out that sub. I really appreciate it. Thank you for helping the support on Twitch today. It means a lot. Waffle. You think they're adding the Polaris right now to dissuade a lot of players from owning so many large ships? I think they're, the ship has sailed there, and they've lost that chance. Too many people own too many large ships at this point. They need to... I, I do agree with you that they need to start communicating. Um, like, I get what you're saying. They want to dissuade people from using the ships they buy. And that's, they're, they're going to have to do that. They got to make a campaign out of that. 
people really want to solo big ships and they will be able to to an extent but cig has to explain that it's going to not be the ideal experience um that being said it would be interesting to see if this was part of their strategy to do that i don't think it's the only reason they would do it but maybe that's a side effect that they're looking for anyways here is their uh last little marketing bit with the polaris and also a chance for us to see it in a more polished state and to watch missiles go boom here you go Badoom! 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 Man, that'd be a huge loss. Let's be honest, if you were gonna whip out a, an Idris and, and get it running... <laughs> oh my god, that's a lot of money gone. Yo! Tom! I see you dropping folks in here in the middle of such a cool session. Thank you. It made our stream look a lot better. <laughs> How you doing? Welcome in. Welcome folks with the raid. Assuming you're coming from Star Citizen, I'm guessing. It's a nice place to be around. Star Citizen people seem to be pretty cool. Uh, you also might find that you're in company, so you might enjoy it here too. We're talking about all the ships that might be coming out in Star Citizen over this next year. So we've been going over a couple different lists and videos. You actually are coming in at the round, the, the end of this whole session. Um, but as you can see, we've been tapping along, seeing what we can find, and just chatting back and forth. Thanks for hopping by. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Sold a couple Polarises, Polarises, whatever you call it. Wonder what the claim tie will be on an Idris? Too much. Interestingly, the, the claim times will probably change based on the system based on supply and demand and stuff um all right here's what we're gonna do i got an idea i have a spreadsheet for features coming up over the next year but why don't we take a look at ships as well so i'll make a new column um we're gonna we're gonna add a road up here and we're just going to call this features and stuff. You write in there features and stuff. Join me in my tools. I usually don't whip out tools for these streams, but maybe I should start. Jeez, getting into some paint, you know, notepad, the ultimate tools of analysis. Honestly, when I was, I was a big uh, Devin Nash fan. I don't know if you guys watch him it is common amongst like people who are watching or like making a lot of streaming stuff, actually. And he always uses notepad, which I found funny because he's going into these like very deep analysis levels and whips out this very uh, civilian program, I guess. I don't know. Let's bold that. It looks a lot more special when you bold it. Okay, so I think I can actually take these guys and move them here. 
Can you just come up here? Um... You have to change the rating on the stream if you're whipping out your... <laughs> Watch out, he's got sheets. Yo, Spericato. Thanks for the sub. Gifting the sub out. Spericato's over here just letting Christmas rip. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you for the support today. How was your Christmas, by the way? How's your whole week going? Christmas to New Year's week. Good times. Did I just skip over the Fury XL or did you miss that? The, the large ship from your eye and the... In that video, I did not skip over that. Okay, so they said about six new vehicles and ships and half one of 2024. We also have the RSI Polaris, um, which I guess I would put that at quarter four of 2024, I think. Uh, what else have we gone over today? Hit me. Hit me, folks. Come on. We got a new Mirai ship. New Mirai ship as being called the Fat Fury, shall we call it? Bet you that's coming out half one of 2024. Give me more predictions. Come on, folks. More names, more predictions. What do we got? The Zeus. Zeus MK2 coming out in a quarter. That's probably November, I want to say, of 2024. PH fat. You're right. You're right. What am I doing? Pay some respects. Uh, Can you guys even see this? Zoom in a little bit. Tally rework, modularity, and for that we'll say the tally and the MPUV. Ooh, give me a spicy date for that one. The G12 is a good call, yes. Origin D G12, cool Ursa. I bet you that's a half one. <laughs> See, these over here, these are all things that they've said. They said all of these features were half one of this year. And all these things are in-game. And these don't have dates. They were just said mostly next 12 months. This over here, these are going to be all of my predictions. So let's not... Nobody take this as what CIG is saying. Let me very clearly call this my own big brain predictions for your pleasure. Ah, let's say our. You guys are here, right? What else we got? No galaxy. Nah, I don't think so. I do not believe so. The Apollo. RSI Apollo. God, I have no idea when that would be. Zeus Dorito. What about reworks? I wasn't really thinking reworks, but the modularity I was going to include. Legionnaire. Yes. And there's one more we didn't go over. Don't worry, we're not done here. We got to hit the... um. Our good friend, the Raylan. Anvil Legionnaire. I bet you that's a half too. Because they're going to need to have some form of hacking for that. Make it happen with my streamer privilege. Make what happen? You tell me and I'll make it happen. You want Squadron 42 out this summer? I got Squadron 42 out for you this summer. But don't tell me you want it out this summer. Because I'm not going to I'm not gonna do it. I could do it. But I'm not going to do it. Totally in my power. The Vulcan... Imagine if they released the Vulcan and weren't going to tell us. Surprise, RSI, or Anvil ship. I'm just going to say 2024 for that. I got to put that for, for this too. Excuse me. RSI Apollo, have to. Actually, we don't even have a confirmation for the RSI Apollo. I'm going to leave that blank for now. Arastra? I don't think they said that was going to be in that year. Oh, did I say 23? <laughs> it's coming out tomorrow! Vulcan is dependent on drone tech, so that would be a surprise. Zucl isn't as good as you're hoping it. You might trade it for the Prospector. Four ships to come that are unannounced? Yeah, I think that's probably included in here. And this, the, some of these might be included in here too. Tumbrel Bike, good call. Tumbrel bike. Um, you know what? Can I go back to that? <clears throat> Take me back. Here we go. 
Uh, we got this Ursa variant of some sort. There's the Argo, Mystery Ship, Fat Fury, Legionnaire, uh, Zeus, Modularity, Polaris. So we got all those. And then we also touched on the Apollo, which we we got. And the Hawk is just getting a little bit of a rework, so we don't need to mention that. So is this what we've got confirmed so far then? How much is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 that we know of. G12 has a few different variants. Man, I'm missing something. I'm going to say the Gatak Raylan as a maybe. I'm definitely missing stuff here. I'm going to have to go back through videos again. Ranger. That'd be cool. Galaxy. I, I, it's really... It comes down to the the signs and we're not going to know what the signs are until late january when they release all of the news about what their updated roadmaps and timelines are especially looking at the pu teams the na and eu pu teams their gameplay is probably going to point towards some of the ships that are coming out but you know we don't know like we might see refinery ships in 2024 we might see the the expanse um might even see the arastra because this stuff was done in terms of design and engineering. We just haven't seen really what they're doing in terms of gameplay. It was on the monthly reports at the beginning of this year. And if something was on the monthly reports at the beginning of this year and then didn't get worked on, if they're bringing 700 devs over from Squadron 42, you can bet it's going to get picked back up. So refining might be something that we see this year too. And um, if if Squadron 42 does come out this year, that is such a big freaking if, but let's just, let's put it this way. Um, Aegis Idris, Aegis Javelin, oops. These will, uh, and then what, Vanduul, Scythe, I'll count these as reworks because they're pretty big deal reworks. Vanduul Blade, Vanduul Glaive, and I think the Vanduul Singer were the ships that they showed. And these are all Squadron 42 year, we'll just call it. Perseus at ILW, that'd be pretty nuts. Galaxy Refinery Module. Yeah, I don't think we'll see the Galaxy this year, though. 2024. Fourth Zeus variant. Yeah, there should be one of some sort, but they haven't really talked about it. Yeah, the Vandal Scythe is already out. As I said, these are reworks. In fact, why don't we just include the Anvil Hawk? Call it a rework. Um, Freelancer. I, we could make this a very robust list, to be honest. We can call this a rework. The, the Saber is going to get a rework. Um, the Retaliator is going to get a rework. Rework and rework. And then I can apply these here. Oh, not these. Good evidence to support what? 600 I rework. That's a good one. We should actually touch on that real quick. Um, I don't know if this would be if this would be something that they would try to fit in this year. They've talked about it in the past, though. Actually, last Citizen Con wasn't the saber brought up to gold standard recently. Yeah, but they're all gonna have to get more work for the uh, engineering and and um aerodynamics stuff and i think they're gonna try and get that in for squadron no way on the arastra i think the arastra is a stretch 
Here is the 600i rework though, which is a, a pretty hefty rework. When you see it, you'll, I think you'll agree. This is gonna be a large change. So this is the previous citizen con for those who missed it. Here is literally, this is the same sort of thing that they did for the Zeus this year, right? Now they did it for the Spirit the year uh, before. Ships to this, and they also cover with not as good audio. Compared to the Cutlass and Freelancer series, the, the Spirit benefits from uh, not only Crusade Industries' sort of stylish uh, physical appearance, but also their renowned speed and agility uh, over those other variants. We have three variants of the Crusader Spirit. We have the C1. You know what I just realized? That is not the right video. I'm thinking of... It was another video around the same time. I'm gonna have to go back in here real quick. Twenty-two. It's not a series of new concept images like those that were created for the 600i we showcased a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, so this would be here. Slightly infamous in their mishandling of the original 600i rollout. Let's find out what went wrong the first time around and take right. a look at how. So here's one of the biggest reworks a ship is going to see in Star Citizen so far. Concept rework. Can't confirm this will be a 2024 edition though. The 600i when it first first came out was one of those ships that we talked about in the past that has had uh, a troubled development. The original 600i, it, it's. Its core issue was what we prioritized for space. The rear was a massive habitation area where there was pool tables and bars. And then you had the very front of the ship, which had the bridge and the, the captain's quarters. And then it forced the entirety of the core gameplay loops of the ship to live in the middle of it. So you had this small module where everything needed to happen. If you're designing spaceships, you, you kind of need to make sure that everything's there for a reason. And, and when we get to the point where we've got kind of big unused areas of the ship that don't really support a functionality, it just feels like a wasted opportunity. The 600i was done relatively early for Origin as a brand. We, we, we'd had the 300 and it was the first really big Origin ship that we decided to do. Since then, we've obviously tackled much larger Origin ships with the 890 and Throughout the course of the 90, the Origin style completely evolved from what it was, which you had some very technical and wooden surfaces, to instead have this lovely transition that goes between them, which can be seen across the 90, the, the clear but smooth divide between the different sections of the ship. In terms of reworking the 600i, we had a sort of very clear brief. We want to bring it up to modern day standards. So there's a lot of features that didn't exist in the game there or weren't accounted for at the time, uh, to integrate those into the ship now, and then to also make better use of the space, because anyone that's been on board a 600 i knows there's a, lot of, there's a lot of walking and going up and down to get to where <laughs> you want to, and it doesn't really need to be like that. 600i is huge. You guys remember when they introduced the 600i as, the, uh, as a competitor to the Connie? But it's just so much bigger. Currently, the 600i is concept complete. There's a couple of rooms which haven't had full concept work done on them, such as the crew quarters. But for the most part, every room has had a complete and utter rework. The big change for the module uh, section is its placement. So rather than being the sort of central core of the ship that you had to go through to get to the back half of the ship, uh, it is now in the rear section of the ship, which allowed us to move the, the common shared areas to the central uh, section. We did that change because it just makes the flow of the interior better. Um, when you have a 600i, regardless of which uh, module you have, you know the, the front half of the ship is a consistent experience. And then the, the gameplay alterations with that module is constrained to a very specific area at the back. So the best way to think of the 600i layout is between three parts. You have the very front of the ship, which is the bridge and the captain's quarters. For the most part, they've remained mostly the same. There's been a few tweaks to the layout of the chairs on the bridge, but Generally, that hasn't changed very much. The captain's quarters is almost the same as it was before, except it's flipped around. The bathroom moved from one side to the other. The reason for that is directly behind that, the lobby area on the top deck. We now have a small docking collar with space for a few um, suits. And the opposite side of that is now a lift to take you 
between two floors into the rear, uh, the exterior of the ship. Directly behind that, which used to be the modular section, we now have on the top deck, the crew habitation area. So it starts off with a large open shared communal space where there's places to eat, uh, make food, and then see now that that's full private crew. That is a winning design, not just because it looks good, but it screams 890. Like it's, they've done a great job of, it's funny that they, they introduce a ship and then they introduce another ship and then they were like, wait, that old ship isn't great. Let's make it look more like this other ship we made. But they did a fantastic job of taking the styles of the 890 jump and applying them to the 600. This looks so much more luxury than what the 600 is. And it reminds me a lot of the 890 jump. Places to I like eat. This. Like from the stairs to the outcropping here to the um, just the, the general styling of this floor below this one. I think it looks a lot better. But for those who are, you know, 600i owners, what do you guys think of what you've been seeing of this? Uh, make food. Dude, luxury people don't need handrails. All right. You ever heard of a, a fancy person wanting to put their hand on something? No. Use anti-gravity technology to keep them on their feet. Or you don't try at all. And then to the side of that, there's four private. <laughs> Which, to be honest, they're probably not trying at all. <laughs> the crew bedrooms. The floor beneath that now is where engineering and all the components that allow the ship to function have been moved to. Think very similar to what we've done on the 400i, where you have the, the separate engineering section beneath. Directly behind that, we then have the ship modular section. We'll start with the expedition version. So on the top deck, at the very, very top, we have the armory. There's a huge armory with plenty of extra suit lockers for you and your friends to take extra equipment, depending on what you might encounter. Behind that, we then have the hologlow that allow you to do the exploration. On the middle deck, we then have the medical bay, which will have a medical suite similar to that as the Carrick. It'll have a tier two med bed. Beside that, we then have the secondary cargo hold. So this cargo hold, it's more readily accessible for the crew. So it's more for your day-to-day -day supply. So if, if you want to have a box full of your food or your snacks, that, that's where you put it instead of down in your main cargo hold. Because you don't want to go rooting through your garage just to find that random pen that you've left. On the bottom deck of the expedition version, we then have the main cargo hold and garage. So obviously as this is um to give you a little bit of perspective of how this how big this area is, you can fit a Nova tank here now. Like they've when we say this was a competitor to Connie and it felt wrong because the ship was so much bigger, this makes way more sense that like this looks much bigger than what I think of as a six hundred I. So I'm glad that they've been able to take better space of it. Looks like you've got enough space for a big vehicle as well as cargo afterward. This is going to be a much more common ship, I think, for people to use as like a group exploration and general purpose kind of ship after this rework because there's way more space and ability to do stuff with this. Good work on this. I really hope this comes next year. Still can't confirm though. Of the expedition version, we then have the main cargo hold and garage. So obviously, as you've seen from the pictures from the recent Inside Star Citizen, it is much, much larger than it was before, with a much, much larger lift to fit much larger vehicles in it. In there, there's also two small lifts, one to allow you to bring cargo up to the main cargo area, and then there's the smaller one that goes through the three decks. Moving on to the Touring variant, we get a completely different experience. The Touring's primarily split between two main decks, though one of the decks is across two floors. So the upper deck brings you out into the large lobby area, from the lobby area, you can choose to go up the side staircases to the main meeting area slash eating room, as well as a bar. And if you go left and right from there, you can get to the private guest suites. Private guest suites are very large and luxurious. They also come with their own skate pods. The lower deck is a spa. So the spa has a pool, a sauna, bar, as well as a kitchen for the crew to actually be able to make food for the guests. So whilst we're kind of doing a complete or almost a complete rework of the interior on the exterior of the ship, we're trying to keep it as true to how it is now as we possibly can. There will be some slight changes. We'll need to move the hangar bay doors a little bit. Um, there'll be some additional kind of cutouts or escape pods and we need to fit the airlock in properly. Um, so there will be some minor changes, but overall we're trying to keep it as, as close to what you see now as a 600 as we can. 
So next step is essentially just finding a slot in the production schedule for it. It's about finding the space where we can start doing the production art and designers can get on board with actually making it come alive again. We're all super excited with the work that we've actually done on it. It's just trying to actually get the schedule to align so that we can begin the work on it. It's not going to start today or tomorrow, <laughs> but it is something we're looking to try and include as soon as we can. Or, you know, uh, I don't know, what does this even say? 14 months later? As we can. When was this? I think people should this be... This is November 22. So yeah, it's like 14 months ago or so. Um, don't know what's going on with the 600 I rework. They haven't really talked much about it, I think. But I think that's mainly all the things... All the things I would consider might come out next year. Again, I don't think I don't think a lot of this will. Especially if Squadron 42 isn't coming out. But I'll keep writing this down. We'll, we'll make this a little bit more understandable. All the things that probably won't happen will be towards the top. Uh, I think that's all of the ships I can think of. We got a monthly report here. This is the most recent one. They don't release November, December until January. We get both of them at the same time. So we'll have to wait for that. I actually think they might not release that till February. Can't remember. But the last time they talked about ships in October, they said that the... A1 and C1 reached their final art. We knew that. The Polaris... White box for the Polaris started, or continued. Last month, the team focused on the habitation areas at the front of the ship, working their way back to ensure that everything is set up and ready for design to make a pass. The exterior white box is nearly finished with elements like turrets in progress. Uh, they did work on the Aegis Reclaimer. New variant mentioned, probably the Cutter Rambler and the Crusader A2 for Citizen Con. So there's not really much news on ships, and that's par for the course with the end of the year. They pumped up a lot of the ships marketing over the course of the year and in quarter three, and then in quarter four, we got them released, and now we will probably wait a solid month to like the 25th before we start hearing about their next steps with ships. Hopefully... You got some extra insight into what's going on with ships over the next year in Star Citizen. Thank you for watching on YouTube. If, you, if you're watching this and it became a video after this, come join us on the streams. It's pretty fun. A lot of our chat and stuff gets kind of cut out of here, but we also talk and, you know, yell at each other about fun things. They're talking about cats in chat, right? I don't know. I don't know. We talk about a lot of food, too. Um, yeah, I think... I think we've got a good outlook for next year in terms of both ships and features, especially if they're moving more devs into the PU. But like I keep saying, we won't know about that until February. So until then, I'll just keep on speculating and throwing out some theory crafting and stuff. And hopefully you enjoy that. I've got a video in the works coming out next week that's talking a little bit about gameplay that we're expecting over the next year. And we're just going to keep going from there. I think the next podcast episode will also have... I won't say any names. A good friend to come on and talk about what we might expect. Sims 4. <laughs> you guys have any last questions about ships before we go? Hit me with them. Tell me. Tell me what you would like to know. Can I zoom in here? Is this focus or zoom? This is zoom. What are your deep desires? I can tell you all about air conditioning. I can't, I can actually, I can tell you all about air conditioning. Um, I'm guessing you don't care about that right now though. Oh, the Raylan. Oh, <laughs> good call, man. Ah, oh, we almost missed one last ship. Oh, you're great. You're great. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, Yatak is a small provider of alien ships they made the Sulin, which caught everybody by surprise at the end of the year oh my god i can't oh, i'm gonna have to like transpose this earlier on into the video because i was just about to ditch this ship shame on me when will escape pods work probably with capital ships i would guess okay sorry so the raylan this is a medium-sized alien made cargo ship with a whole bunch of fanciness about it. Let me give you a look. That lighting is too erotic. 
You know, this lighting was a, it was a mistake. My lamp wasn't even working up until like 10 minutes before this because we did get a new router. I forgot to say that. We got a new router. All those problems we were having, our router was two generations behind. And I had to go all the way into the store to find that out. So annoying. Anyways, here you go. Where do we start? That is a good question. The alien stuff is more complex, so um, everything everything sort of stretches your brain just a little bit more. I also have Chris, you know, pushing me to sort of make it different, make it not not fully expected. Alien ships, I think, are super interesting because they have a completely unique aesthetic inside, and this ship particularly, we wanted to create a alien cargo ship. So we wanted to have a sort of above entry level cargo ship that could carry a good amount of cargo for its size, be well defended, multi-crew. We wanted it to be Xi'an, but we didn't want it to be Aopa, their, their combat brand. So we worked up this new company called Gatak, and this is the Gatak Raylan cargo ship. No, it's Gatak. That's how you say it. Right. Hard cup. <laughs> 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 okay, let's do a brief history of House Ngatak. They were a vassal of House Urua. To be honest, the great... I like the um, I like how similar this is to the Siulin without being super super close. They do a great job of the whole same design language without looking too samey stuff in this. These designers, at least, let's listen to lore though. Great Divide, which is the Xi'an Civil War. Um, at the end of the Great Divide. House Klo, who didn't like the way that the peace talks were going, decided that they wanted to kill all the leaders of the houses that were engaged in peace talks. So they sabotaged the network of antique satellites, antique weather satellites that surrounded the um, Xi'an homeworld of Rixian, and accidentally destroyed the whole atmosphere rather than just the atmosphere above the peace talks. Oops. So after this tragedy, after everybody fled the home world to the ne next closest planet, Kawa, um, the house Rua, in recompense for its loss, was elevated to the first imperial house. That's where the first emperors came from. And one of the first things that they did was reward people who fought under them for their service. So they awarded house Ngatak a license in perpetuity to build industrial spacecraft for the entire Saoxiang. Yo, wait, that looks in, sick. In the South Shion, the, Oh my, um, wait, hold on. Shion. Go back. Yo, this looks so cool. This actually looks like it could be an Anvil design. Like if Anvil teamed up with a Xeon manufacturer. This, the, like that detail right there looks kind of Anvil. These sweeping back shapes look a little bit like the Hawk. You could totally work that in. Oh, this, this, I love that design right there. In fact, let me just... Let me just grab this real quick. <laughs> this is very cool. I'm gonna post this somewhere. Saoxian. In in the Saoxian, the um, Saoxian, the Xi'an Empire, they are known for being like really innovative and interested in discovering the next big, big cool thing in technology. And that's part of why they immediately jumped on the opportunity to make a ship that would be friendly to both Xi'an and humans. like. Cutting out stuff is their thing. The alien stuff is the hardest one to sort of deal with, with sort of branding. We did our usual. We came up with three sort of strong candidates to give to Chris to have a look at. And from there, it's, I mean, people will see that uh, very early on, it was, it was almost locked in. It was like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're a lot more confident in how we approach these things now. You know, we make sort of stronger decisions right at the start to push those Ooh, through. Wait, go back. This one's pretty nice too. Yeah. Wait, what was that? In there, it's um, three sort of with sort of. Yo, see, this is what I'm talking about, man. Imagine the art book for this game. Sort of strong candidates to give to Chris to have a look at, and from there, it's. I mean, people will see that uh, very early on, it was, it was almost locked in. It was like, okay, this is what we're doing. This honestly, this looks kind of like a um, mix between was... um, the the Sentinels from Halo, and I, it kind of reminds me of like stuff from Armored Core. 
Just a little bit. Armored Core and also, for some reason, The Matrix. I love this stuff, man. It was almost locked in. It was like, okay, this is what we're doing. We're a lot more confident in how we approach these things now. These are bombers. You know, we make sort of stronger decisions right at the start to push those through. One of the big features of the ship was the oh, fact yeah, Metal that Gear. it changes shape like massively. So, so this is where the really complexity nice comes in. This, this ship has a ton of animations and the way that you enter it, the way that you use it, and the way that it lands and moves on its own. Was the fact that it changes shape like massively. So that's the really nice thing about this ship. And coupled with, uh, you know, the sort of final materials that we came up with, there's no mistaking the ship now. It's, it's, okay, this is the Gatak cargo ship. There's no messing around. The Rayland crew capacity is four people. Uh, so you have the, the pilot, uh, you have uh, an engineer and then you have the two extra crew to man the two man turrets which are on the side of the ship and provide a, a good range of cover uh, for it. Uh, there is space for all four to be on the bridge when not in combat um, or elsewhere in the ship but ostensibly that's what the, the four roles are for. The Raylan has 320 SCU of cargo and this is all pretty much external. You can see it on the back of the ship. Part visual choice, part gameplay choice. They are fixed containers on the rear of the ship and the cargo goes inside them. So having it external allows us to keep the internals of the ship all nice and compact, but also does give a toss up in choice between do I pick a ship with lesser cargo but is more protected or do I go for this, uh, which can carry more in one run, but has the risk of if I get jumped on in, in transit, my cargo is more at risk. That's something we always try and do with our ships is not have one ship that is superior in every single way to another ship that's that's equal to it. We want there to be trade-offs. Yeah, that's Even from, and that's something that know, trying to get uh, into gets ships. missed a little bit when we're discussing all of these ships and going through this stuff throughout the time that they're even building this game. Like people are forgetting a lot that at the end of the day every ship that you get is going to change and be balanced against the other ships. Like they'll, they'll make these ships and it might look like they're going to step on each other. And maybe in some cases they will. Nobody's perfect. No game is perfect. This game's going to have problems, but like for the most part, they're going to take these ships and then they're going to purposefully make them a little bit different in the way they perform, the way engineering works, the way cargo works, all that, so that there are trade-offs for each ship. That's why I tell people like, don't, don't buy a ship with, don't tie yourself too much to the specifics of a ship tie yourself to the idea of what it's supposed to do because they'll shift around and it's partially why it's not worth buying ships right now it's going to be a unique experience. oh somebody was asking what class this is in let me show you real quick this is actually a lot smaller than it looks in pictures it's it's a little bit um it's it's a bit deceiving so this looks pretty big i think uh when you see it in some pictures where are the normal pictures here we go so like in these shots where it's landed to me it looks pretty large but then when you go and you look at the actual size of it it's like 50 something meters long 54 meters by 54 52 meters it's a massive cube but it's not actually that big it's not much larger than a constellation besides like thickness thick so your call. But let's see what they were saying about it. What's more? There's so many tabs open. Excited for this rework just because nope, of- this isn't it. Where did this video go? Get rid of this and this and this. Here we go. So you've, you know, essentially you've got a grav left platform that's gonna fly through the air, come and greet you, you get on it click a button takes you up to the entrance of the ship through the airlock that's where you first get your experience of the Xi'an architecture within this ship when you choose to get on the lift to go up to habitation um, you know you've got a console that's made out of like 50 different pieces in it and it all builds itself into into position and you click the button get on your elevator which isn't the standard elevator either. At the moment, it's at an angle, so you have a very different experience of like transitioning up through the floor. I've actually got a video of that, by the way, that console he mentioned there. 
habitation. Um, you know, you've got a console that's made out of like 50 different pieces in it, and it all builds itself into into position. And you click the button, get on your. I'm pretty sure I have that here somewhere. Come on. Yes. Let's take a look at some of the art and animation on display. We've seen this before on the stream. The larger giant ships. As you can see, there are many design aspects that set the giant ships apart from the UEE craft. Some are obvious. So I'll let you see the whole thing, but the second one is, I think, the terminal kind of thing he's talking about in the Gatak Raylan. Race that's been traveling the stars for thousands of years. Their doorways, terminals, even the concept of gravity are just different. Here's what I'm guessing it'll look like. Which is pretty cool. I mean, now that we've seen the animations on the Sulin, I actually think they'll do that. But a lot of the architecture really looks good. I love that song too. I wish they would release that. Your elevator. Which isn't the standard elevator either at the moment, it's at an angle, so you have a very different experience of like transitioning up through the floors, and the floors will also um, transform to sort of enable you to get through easily. So then when you're in the habitation section, you've got access to beds and lockers. You can go left and right to the turrets and escape pods. And then you've got the dual race kitchen and bathroom section, and then sort of like a communal eating area. And then from there up, uh, basically it takes you into a more technical section. And so you can either go to um, a docking, which is at the rear of the ship. Um, and then you've also got uh, a good portion of components in like the sort of oh, there it is. quite technically themed area of the ship. And then you transition through there towards the bridge. And again in there is, um, we were looking at a way of being able to access components in a non-standard way. So the big stuff we've kept quite traditional because it makes sense, they're just there. Uh, but the smaller stuff, it's, it's kind of like a component delivery system. So you choose which component you want to access. It's delivered to you. You can change out whatever it is you need to choose. See, change, like, and then it's taken back off. When I say this ship is more complex, <laughs> who came up with this? You would absorbed back into the ship. Then you just transition into the bridge, open bridge, um, and then, like I mentioned, the captain and the um, co pilot at the front in the large, like, floating, almost like UFO style uh, seats. So I think there's plenty of great opportunity in there for in terms of animation and what we can do with what's spinning, what's moving, what's reconfiguring. Um, so I think the ship team is going to have a lot of fun with that. So what does the Raylan add to Star Citizen as a whole? It really increases the diversity of spaceships, um, especially alien ones, because they are entire races of creatures and they don't just have combat ships. They have their own infrastructure needs, they have their own transport needs. So whatever we do as the human race, there, there is going to be mirrors for, for those races. When you are traveling through all the solar systems in the game, you don't want to just be seeing the, the same freelancer or the same hull everywhere. You want this yeah, variety of ships to encounter and ships to, to progress through on your cargo journey. The Gatak Railroad. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that was... Did they say this was great box work? I mean, it's... I feel like some of these animations are more pre -vis to than anything. To the entrance of the ship. But it does look... You click a button, takes you up to the entrance of the ship through the airlock. I don't know if they specifically uh, stated what level this is at, um, but it's definitely going to be interesting to see what they do with the cargo boxes. I'm wondering if they're just going to redesign this back area to have regular size cargo boxes. Still make them the individual pods, but... Maybe just make them standard 32 SCU boxes because I get if the Xeon used a different cargo system, but that's going to be weird if... Like, what do we even do? <laughs> With that. So what does the Raylan add to Star Citizen as a whole? It really... Jesus, it looks so cool when it does that. So what does the Raylan add to Star Citizen as a whole? It really increases the... Oh, man. 
Can't wait for some of these ships. So this is another one that, honestly, they talked about it uh, actually during that, around the, like that round table episode that we were watching. Um, they did talk about releasing this ship. The team that was working on the Santakyai is supposed to move on to this ship when they're done. And since the Santakyai and 322 did come out, you would we would expect that this ship is starting to pick up and in, in work, but... There's no, uh, there's nothing here. Um, the only stuff they have here is like the concept work from way back in 2021. So nothing has been added to the progress tracker. I'm guessing we'll hear about this in the late December, late January. I don't know if this is going to come out this ne- this 2024. That does not really compute with the complexity of the ship and the time, but maybe they can get it done. So I wouldn't say that one's also going to be in 24, but... Um, it's it's going to enter active development in 24. There's at least that. Think there will be some resource sharing with the Sulin? Yeah, there will be some. It'll definitely help them fill, flesh it out too. We're making large ships even purchasable with money and flyable or mistake. Uh, a mistake or brilliant marketing move. Do you think Star Citizen would be different if medium and smaller ships were the focus with the larger ships being on the back burner prior to release? Or is the data they gather from ship releases too important to development? I think they definitely could have done a smaller scale game with less large ships, but it also helped them with marketing a lot. Thinking of buying the game, but you see many things like Space Engineers. If you are looking for a game that doesn't is is has a lot of bugs, or sorry, if you don't want to play a game that has a lot of bugs, I would stay away from Star Citizen for now. It's not ready for most people. It might be by the end of this next year, but right now it's still going to be frustrating to most, I think. And that, for me, I think wraps up just about everything that I know. I don't think there's anything else in here that I would, ouch, be looking for. Um... Cutter, Vulture, Hull C, Hull A, Apollo. Here's the Apollo work that was going on. Unannounced, unannounced, unannounced. You'd love some modularity, even if it's just the retaliator. Just want to see some progress on that side. Glad we are getting the ball moving again. Yeah, I'm glad modularity is going well. Fat Fury, yes, we looked at that. Raft rework. Did somebody talk about a raft rework at some point? Rock TS, 400i, Scorpius. Let's see where the concept team is working on. Oh, that's content, there we go. Nothing, they have the vehicle concept team hasn't been working for a good long while on the Tumble Storm. At least not that we know of. Interesting. Okay. Well, folks, that's it for video, for uh, vehicles and ships. We've got plenty of other stuff to talk about coming in 2024. And we'll be doing that over the next month, like I've been saying. We'll cover features, weapons, FPS, engineering, economy, character customization, stuff like that across different streams, conversations, and podcasts. Keep an eye out for the first podcast of the year coming out on Monday. And that'll be talking about expectations for the rest of the year. I'll be bringing in uh, a, a known and trusted source and we'll talk about just kind of what it seems like CIG is trying to prepare us for. Nothing too crazy, nothing too restrained. We'll try to keep it middle of the park, although you know me. <laughs> I never do. But yeah, that's about it for today, folks. Thank you for joining. Hope you had a good time. Purchasing Star Citizen is purchasing a game that won't release in at least eight years, but you can play it now. Eh. I think eight years is pushing it. This next year will be telling. If you clap your hands hard enough and believe Star Citizen is a game, you'll also deafen everybody in the in the voice channel with you. Yeah, thank you all for the stream. Or, uh, thank you for the stream. Thank you for coming to the stream. I mean, the stream wouldn't be a stream if there wasn't chat to make it streamy. You know? So... Thanks for being streamy, guys. 
and girls. And I look forward to seeing you. Like I said, we won't be having a stream tomorrow uh, as we do have a family medical emergency. But we will be hosting the stream again on Saturday. At least that is the plan. So I hope you all will join us on Saturday for that. And I hope you'll come and see us on um, on Sunday because we will be doing a, what's it called? A stream, not a streamathon, but a pretty long stream with the community as we celebrate New Year's Eve with all of you. So if you are looking to join us on our annual celebration as we normally do, me and Mrs. Tomato will be here on the stream for like five hours straight, celebrating all the time zones in America with all of you. So jump around for that if you'd also like to join us and uh, enjoy yourselves for the rest of the day. Have a good time, folks. Have a good weekend. I hope for the best for you. Go eat some great, great food. Give someone a hug. Appreciate you all. Hope you had a good one. Peace out, y'all. 07s.